months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the Describe Your Company section. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A Missouri Appeals Court judge will be taking over the municipal court system in Ferguson, Missouri. The Associated Press reports that follows a highly critical report of Ferguson's justice system by the U.S. Department of Justice. The Missouri Supreme Court said Monday it's assigning appeals judge Roy Richter to hear all of Ferguson's pending and future municipal court cases. He will take over on March 16th for Ronald Brockmeyer, who resigned on Monday. In response to a recent study that linked fluoride to low IQ levels, Australia's National Health and Medical Research Council has announced it will review the nation's policy on water fluoridation. A spokesperson cautioned that the study was done in China and different levels of naturally occurring fluoride mean that care needs to be exercised in interpreting the results. The decision to review follows the release of two more recent studies that found health problems related to water fluoridation and increased rates of ADHD in children, as well as problems with the thyroid gland. Reuters reports that the International Monetary Fund is assuming Ukraine will be able to pay back $15.4 billion of the $40 billion rescue package from the IMF. The news comes from a source familiar with the IMF's documents. Ukraine is seeking a loan from the International Bank to stabilize their economy. Under the IMF program, Ukraine would be forced to make changes to its energy sector and banking system. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This week, the Forest Service rolled out a brand new Smokey the Bear campaign in which the popular mascot burns to death. They say they hope the shocking turn will get people serious about preventing forest fires for once. The new campaign depicts Smokey the Bear noticing a family leave a flame unattended. Before he can put it out, the entire forest is consumed and Smokey dies in agony while trying to fight the blaze. Despite educating the public for over 70 years, the Forest Service says wildfires have only gotten worse and it was time to take their warnings to the next level. The new ads aim to show that if Smokey the Bear can be killed by the very type of fire he works so tirelessly to prevent, it could happen to anyone at any time. So what's next for the long-running campaign? Well, now that their primary spokesperson is out of the picture, the Ad Council says the PSAs will shift focus to a new character named Little Brian. He's the boy whose family caused the fire in the first place, and he's grappling with crippling guilt over Smokey's death. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here and bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the program at username lrn.fm. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. And, of course, uh, you can join us online anytime at freetalklive.com. We give you the features on our website, totally free. Coming up here tonight, there is a disturbing story, yet another disturbing story out of the United Kingdom. Now, I don't remember which day it was, but Mark, when I told you about this last night, you didn't recall the story, so it was probably a night you weren't on the show, so I'm guessing Friday night. But uh, at some point within the last couple of weeks, we talked about this uh, character, Jimmy Saville, from the United Kingdom. He was described as sort of a a Johnny Carson of the the UK. This guy is a very popular television oh, host. Oh, the BBC guy. You familiar with him? Yeah, Kitty Ripper. Yeah. So yeah. the allegations about this guy are that he, uh, essentially, that he had access to a hospital, and because he was like a big donator to this hospital, and that he molested people as young as seven and as old as their forties. So he molested a, a wide range of patients, supposedly numbering the in the dozens. Well, at least he's not an ageist. 
over a period <laughs> of uh, decades at this hospital. And essentially the you know the kind of the, sh- the the other shocking part of this story is that people in the hospital knew what was going on but would not do anything about it. So for instance the higher ups when they were approached by the the low level nurses and you know janitorial mm-hmm. staff or whoever might witness something or have been talked to by one of the victims and said hey this guy did this to me and then they tr- tr- tried to take that up to the higher ups the higher ups would say things like oh Jimmy Savile wouldn't do something like that and then you know mm. just blow it off essentially and then worse it got to the point where the the lower level folks at the hospital were afraid to report because they were worried they would lose their jobs. There was that level mm-hmm. of kind of a cover-up going on. And so- Yeah. Uh, who was it who said that, you know, the, the patrons of any given side generally not only do not object to the atrocities convic- con- uh, committed by their side, but um, have a talent for never hearing about them. It, I remember now it was Orwell. Um, do you remember that Orwell quote? No. And, and that seems to be, I mean, denial can be a very powerful thing. And the funny thing is, I think a lot of those people probably really didn't know because they didn't want to know. Yeah. Let's go to the phones here. We'll talk about what this is going to the next level, this sort of Jimmy Savile-esque situation in the United Kingdom. We'll share that with you here in a moment. Uh, and let's go first to Mike. On the line here, Mike, where are you calling from tonight? You're on Free Talk Live. Uh, I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Welcome. You are on the air. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I'm calling. uh, One of your listeners uh, told me about you guys um, and your show. Uh, I'm the falconer who uh, got caught up in uh, charges related to what I'm licensed to do, which is to breed raptors and to use them in the sport of falconry. Now, I thought raptors went extinct uh, back in the day. They have those in Jurassic Park, right? Birds of right? prey, you dolt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of, now, come uh, on, let's be adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so so I've, no, I've never heard of a raptor outside of uh, Jurassic Park. So is that an actual type of bird, or is it like a generic term for birds of prey? That's a generic word for birds of prey. That's I see. Precise. Okay, so and, uh, you you breed birds of prey, and you got in trouble for it? Well, I breed birds of prey, and I'm also a licensed falconer. Um, and, uh, and a licensed falconer is one who hunts with falcons? Exactly. Perfect. Okay, thanks. And generally, in the United States, there are about 4,000 to 4,500 of us. Um, and uh, generally, uh, the only people that are raptor propagators are people that were falconers or are falconers. So uh, we are operated under a set of rules set up by U.S. Fish and Wildlife under the Department of Interior. And what's crazy is the, the draconian penalties under these, uh, these rules come from a migratory bird treaty established in the early 1900s. And that treaty basically was to deal with poachers and illegal sellers of uh, wildlife. Um, well, that's the same uh, authority by which Fish and Wildlife governs us. So what I was surprised to find is when they decided to charge me with something, it fell into one of two categories. I was either going to be a felon or I was going to have a misdemeanor criminal charge, although petty offense. So wait, how and, long uh, had you been doing this breeding before these criminal charges came at you? Uh, eight years for the breeding and falconry I've been at for, you know, going on 30 years. Okay. So what? Uh, where did these charges come from all of a sudden? Well, um, they actually were pushed by a guy at the state level here in Pennsylvania um, who is the head of the special permits office. Special permits special is like everything. Special permits. Yeah, wow. special permits. I feel very special. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, but they cover about 70,000 permits. Uh, say a guy wants to breed deer or you know, somebody wants to do some scientific collection of a certain species. They go to that department. Um, and uh, falconers are about 4,000 in the U.S., so you'd have to meet another 75,000 people to meet your next falconer, you know, 350 million people. So in the same way, that the, the persons at the permits office very rarely know what they're doing in relation to what we do. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yet they will tell you things that contradict even the law. Of course uh, they will. That's example, how bureaucrats operate. They don't know their own rules and usually don't care about them. One brain and, can't accommodate all of their rules. They're no more capable of it than we are. <laughs> 
Well, it, it, yeah, and what's interesting is when they don't know the rules, what they do is they make them up. And, mm-hmm. and if, you, if you catch them making them up, they don't want to take back the last rule they made up. So they, they tell you they're sticking to their guns regardless of what the law says. And here's what I found out after they, they charged me with this. When you pay a $300 an hour D.C. law firm that handles prop, uh, wildlife law, uh, what they found out, which was uh, quite interesting, is in the state code of Pennsylvania, anybody can Google it, PA state code, uh, and then quote, propagation stock end quote. And what you'll find is it says you may not remove any wild animal or bird, comma, except raptors for propagation stock. Well, that's exactly the permits I have. I have a raptor propagation permit from both the state and federal authorities. And yet this turned into an eight-month ordeal where after spending over $25,000, I was found not guilty in federal court. Wow. How much money? 25000 at least twenty five, and yeah. that's not counting wow. my state. Attorney. Did they write you a check back for that? If you'd had a choice, I would have called. I would call that a pyrrhic victory. But since you didn't have any choice but to fight, I, I'll just salute you for winning. Well, thank you. If I had signed the ticket, then I would have been pleading nola contendere to the charge, meaning guilty to the charge, and only it would only cost me three hundred twenty five dollars. But what generally happens, based on my knowledge of this uh, climate with falconers and my history in the community, um, what generally happens is they then move to remove your permits Mm. uh, once you plead no contest. Um, So it was a catch-22 where if I pled no contest to make it go away, there was a good chance I'd lose one or both of my permits. And uh, if I fought it, uh, I was going to have to spend a lot of money. So we chose to fight it. Um, and we're not done yet because we're not sure if the state is going to come back at us, even though they, they lost miserably in federal court. Let me tell you, on the 18th, we had the federal prosecutor, U.S. attorney, a silver-haired guy who just put this, the last state treasurer in prison. Okay, uh, So those are the kind of cases he normally handles. His assistant, the special agent, which is basically uh, a fish and game person at the federal level, the local WCO, which is the Wildlife Conservation Office, the permits guy, his underling, and several other people, including a lawyer, about eight people against me for a petty misdemeanor, petty offense. Uh, it was absolutely ridiculous. And, and the allegation the was what? Thing. A paperwork snafu? I mean, what were they no, alleging? They, it, they alleged that I took a bird without uh, authority to propagate, even though I have a raptor took it propagation from where? permit from the state of Pennsylvania. So, like, just a state park or something like that? Well, no, falconers are allowed to remove. We're the only hunters that takes home something alive. We're permitted to... The only way you could get a bird of prey in, in America if you become a falconer, you initially have to trap your own bird. That's part of the process. Mike, stand by. I've got some more questions sure. for you, if you can hang on. Sure. We're with uh, Mike Dupree here. He's a falconer who just spent a whole lot of money trying to defend his freedoms. It's Free Talk Live. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. I'm a state-of-the-art 60-inch flat-screen TV. And I mean, not to brag or anything, but if a burglar ever breaks into this place, I'm pretty certain I'm the first thing he's going to steal. I mean, it's not like he's going to take that recliner over there. (laughs) Or that coffee table. (laughs) Your stuff can't protect itself. That's why the Geico Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on renter's insurance. Renter's insurance will cover personal property loss or damage as well as provide liability protection. Visit geico.com today. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's 
what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. It's weusecoins.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can share your thoughts, your story, whatever's on your mind here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Uh, that is 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Uh, it's Ian Rich and Mark in the studio here with you tonight, and also want to let you know about BuzzBox Coffee. They will hook you up with a pound of some of the best coffee out there for just the cost of shipping. It's a free pound. You just pay the shipping cost. 100% organic, shade-grown, top 1% grade Arabica coffee. Plus, the profits from each pound that you purchase from BuzzBox, because once you get the first pound, the next one will be shipped to you after a certain period of time. You can customize how much. You can customize how often it, it's it's uh, sent out to you. And, of course, the flavor. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. But a portion of the profits go towards microloans which are being given out through Kiva.org, which is helping people around the world make better lives for themselves. So not only are you doing good, but you're also getting great coffee and your first pound's free. Just cover the shipping cost over at coffee.freetalklive.com. You can cancel your subscription at any time. Mike Dupree is uh, with us, and uh, he is on the line, I think. Or, where are you calling from today? Was it uh, Pennsylvania, Mike? Central Pennsylvania, yes. Now, you just got finished with a court case, apparently. There's actually an article over at Huffington Post about you. I'm going to post that on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter so our listeners can learn more about your situation. But from what I've understood so far, you, for kind of what you do, is you breed birds of prey for the purposes of falconry, which is hunting with birds of prey. And you had just told us that the federal government and the state government apparently went after you uh, for violating some sort of paperwork thing where you were telling us that you uh, apparently were you'd gotten a, some sort of a bird from the wild for the purpose of breeding that bird. And Correct. you were just getting into, you know, how they ended up finding out about that or wh what it was that triggered them coming after you. 
That's a, it's a great way of framing how they ended up finding out about it. How they ended up finding out about it is I sent my local game officer an email saying, I need three bands for these birds. You put leg bands on them that identify the specific bird. So when you fill out a piece of paper, it has a serial number basically associated with that bird. So I reported to them that I've got these birds under my permit and I'd like to register them. And uh, was this something you'd done a bunch of times in the past? Because you said you've been doing this for eight years. Well, uh, I'd done it a bunch of times in the past for falconry, uh -huh. where it's uh, it's been around for a long time. What happened was about four years ago, the federal regs changed on propagation. And when I was reading those propagation regs, I noticed that it allowed a take from the wild. A take means that you take an immature or a young bird. And the reason that's allowed is because 70 to 90 percent of raptors are dead in the first year of their life. Okay. So a falconer taking one, Fish and Wildlife has studied it, does zero effect to the wild populations with that kind of mortality rate. Mm -hmm. And so few of us doing it. So the new reg said I was allowed to do this. I contacted the regional office in Hadley, Mass. They confirmed that. They even sent me an email telling me what would be on my next permit. Um, I checked with the state, and the state permits guy said, when you get the bird, I'll send you the band. So I thought I was good to go. It was just that because I got a third bird this past year, normally it's one, zero, or two, uh, it seemed to put it over this threshold for them where what they did, in fact, is not acknowledge the fact that I have two discrete permits I pay for, each of which allows the take of two birds per year with a maximum of five for the falconry permit. So, so you, you, you can have a maximum of five birds? Five wild birds. Okay. So five you believed that you were following their rules. You were you know, trying to be a so-called law-abiding person or whatever, Correct. and they came after you for this. Yes, and I didn't just believe it. I, I did my due diligence. I contacted the regional office. I contacted yeah, sure. the state You're office. Reading those awful, boring regulations. My goodness. Yep. <laughs> Who wants to do that nonsense? Have you yep. considered suing right. them? What's that? Have you considered suing them for false arrest? Yes, um, it, we, we, we're exploring that now. Uh, one of the beauties of all this is there was a gentleman, I do public speaking related to the subject, and there was a gentleman I'd met who was a member of the Pennsylvania Game Commission, and I contacted him the Saturday before the special agent showed up by surprise on Monday. And I told him the whole situation, and he wasn't too surprised. Uh, he said, Micah, guy gets a pet squirrel and they come in like, uh, I won't even say what he said, but you can imagine, like stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, when I told him what was happening, he ended up at my house when they arrived uh, that Monday, because that's when I discovered a special agent from Fish and Wildlife would be joining my local game commissioner. Mm -hmm. And he basically uh, got from them what they wanted and escorted them you know, away and just said, thank you. And you know, let's set up a meeting and see if we can resolve this down in Harrisburg. Well, apparently they weren't having any of that. Uh, they uh, moved forward to charge me, and 30 days later, the charge was basically just a ticket. But I told you what the penalties were, so it was quite serious. Having <sighs> experienced the FBI, I'd, I'd tell you that the only thing lower than a cop is a special agent. Now, just to recap, the penalties you were facing were what? I thought it was like a $300 fine. Well, it was if I chose to pay the fine, it would have been simply three hundred twenty-five. Oh, right, but then they would take your license but, because oh, well, he violated they, our rules, so right. no more license for you, right? That's the that's the history of my community yeah. and lawyers that have researched it. Is then they do that, so it puts you into the category for the rest of your life of being a criminal. Now, I've I've never been so much as frisked. <laughs> I've never been locked up. I've never had a DUI. I've had a few speeding tickets. That's about it in my whole life. Now, question for you. Uh, I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, you were trying to jump through the hoops. But if you had just gone out and gotten these birds and started breeding them without informing the government goons, um, you know, how would you have gotten caught in theory? Well, uh, the way I would have gotten caught is the fact that I became a licensed falconer and licensed propagator. So mm -hmm. they have a list of all the people to target. Yeah, I <laughs> so see. So, for example, in but I think he's asking. I, a, I think he's asking I, if you had never filed any paperwork at all with the state. Well, that wasn't my question. But okay. had you had you never filed, then I mean, in theory, somebody would have had to have snitched you out, right? Yeah, I, I would be I would be uh, doing it illegally and so on and so forth. That's probably but, even more serious, right? If you get busted uh, you doing would that, think, you would think it is. But people that do illegal things with migratory birds, for example, in 1997, I'm living 20 miles outside of D.C. in Silver Spring, Maryland. A guy shoots my hawk, my federally protected hawk that I purchased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Guy shoots it dead. I know where the guy lives. I contact the state. I contact Fish and Wildlife Service. No one ever shows up to get a report. No one files a ticket. Nothing gets done. Nothing. Zero. So you put okay, yourself on their off. radar, and they punished you for it, even though you'd been exactly. jumping through all their hoops and paying the fines. Tell me, uh, Mike, where can people learn more about your situation and what you do? Well, I have a Facebook page. Yep. Uh, it's Mike Dupuy Falconry. And it's spelled D-U-P-U-Y. I apologize. I was mispronouncing correct. it earlier. That's correct. Yeah, you got it perfect, actually. Mike Dupuy. Mike Dupuy Falconry on Facebook, which is a public page where I post these things. In fact, they use one of my postings as evidence <laughs> that I had the three birds, even though I told them I had the three birds months before. Um, so uh, the judge basically, uh, he didn't buy it. Uh, he didn't think I was trying to do anything illegal. No, that's good. Um, and, so you won you and know, had to pay twenty five thousand dollars. what the, a win! To win. I <laughs> hope you can prevail, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mike, in court ultimately with your civil case. And I want to thank you for calling Free Talk Live and sharing your story here tonight. Just goes to show. Thank you again. It just goes to show. It doesn't matter. Even if you think you know the rules, even if you've done your due diligence, you've called the bureaucrats, you've read the regulations. They just make up crap on their own. They'll come after you anyway. Crazy. Cause they can. 855 450 free. No one is safe. Not even somebody who wanted to breed one of these birds. He wanted to make more of them for the world. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Attention listeners, survivallife.com is giving away free Everstrike permanent matches for a limited time only. These matches are waterproof and will light in any weather condition, rain, snow, or sleet. It will still throw a spark. Its built in ferro rod strikes at 3,000 degrees. And it is good for 15,000 strikes. Normally, $15. Today, it's free. Get yours at freesurvivallighter.com. Again, that's freesurvivallighter.com. Hurry, supplies are limited. Visit freesurvivallighter.com today. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. 
This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special super early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through early March, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free here and bring up anything that you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype on in to the program at lrn.fm. And, uh, by the way, if you haven't Skyped us before, you do need to send a contact request first. and We'll approve it, and you'll be good to go from that point forward. Some more disturbing news out of the United Kingdom. Uh, it's gone, this sort of pedophile stuff with uh, Jimmy Savile has gone to the next level, to higher levels in government at this point. And we'll share the shocking story with you from thedailybeast.com. But first, we go to, I believe we've got Hassan in New York via Skype. Hello, Hassan. Hello. Hey, you're on the air. Go ahead. Okay, so I wanted to explore a net neutrality issue from a technical standpoint because in listening to last, I mean, yesterday's episode, um, I felt that there were a few, like, errors in the analysis of it. Okay, well, do it if you can, only do it if you can uh, make it easy to understand for someone who's not a technical wizard uh, because you have to remember this is not a tech show. This is a general audience program. Okay, so I'll try to explore it in a simpler term. So at first we were talking about um, some of the throttling issues that were going on. And from a technical standpoint, it wasn't exactly throttling. It was a scaling back of network capacity. For example... So the allegation like was that uh, Verizon and Comcast had slowed down Netflix on their connections. Yes, the end result was a slowdown. Like, for example, there was one ISP called Level 3. They, they supply to big corporations who need extremely fast connections like Netflix. Mm -hmm. And it was basically the, the peering point between their network and Verizon's network or Comcast's network. And So it, it, this whole, it was Level 3 that was slowing Netflix down or it was Comcast no, and Verizon? It, it was Comcast and Verizon. Okay. The way they, they did it was, for example, in a blog post released by Level 3, that it might be... Basically, what happened was, like, at one of their interconnect points in Los Angeles, they had a facility there where they peered between Level 3 and Verizon. Mm -hmm. And they and the, the peering point were two border routers, one border router on Level 3 side and another border router on Verizon side, in the case of Verizon. And each of those border routers had eight 10 gigabit Ethernet ports with supplied traffic between level three and Verizon. After the whole court case where they struck down the original net neutrality rules, Verizon decided to scale back their border router by essentially disabling four of those 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. Okay. So they essentially so they cut their speed their, in half. Almost. Uh, 40%. Okay. Yeah. As they... And basically, once that happened, speed started to go down, and then they started pushing for fast lane, and that's what started the whole debacle at that point. And when you say fast lane, you mean it, Verizon and fast lane wanted yeah, it was, it was money from Netflix to open up the ports. Yes, they wanted they essentially wanted Netflix okay. to directly peer. So from a Netflix server directly to Verizon. So you've explained technically what privilege. happened, and I think you've done a decent job of it. But what? How did we get? How did you feel like what we had said on the air, or what was said on the air, was uh, was inaccurate? Um, it was also when you were talking about like the tiered access, and how net net neutrality will impact that. And basically, there'll always be tiers because the the only limited resource in networks are the bandwidth. So, for example, you want a 10 gigabit connection, you'll mm -hmm. pay a lot more than you would pay for a 100 megabit connection. 
Sure, sure. And but isn't it possible that, that, that I mean, I didn't say that it was going to for sure be that. Uh, what I had said was that there's a possibility that given that, you know, there's there's these regulations now that essentially are saying that Internet is a public utility, that some providers could go and change their, uh, you know, change the way they bill from billing a flat rate per month to a per gigabyte rate like some wireless providers do. I mean, that's possible, isn't it? That can happen, but with the wireless technology, there's a, there's a reason behind that. And it's also another reason why, like, wireless isn't a good competitor towards wired connections with wireless with wireless communications you have basically your analog signals like a crest and a peak and you essentially i don't know if we should get uh into the physics yeah that's that's a little deep bro yep Um, i want to thank you for the call uh, but i was was just gonna say there's a limitation in bandwidth for wireless here's what i would ask you uh if you are netflix and Verizon cuts back your bandwidth to less than you need to deliver good service, then you you could pay them and say, yeah, you're carrying a lot of traffic for me, and, you know, we appreciate you're doing that, so here, here's a little bit of money, and our customers will subsidize your extra bandwidth. But you could also just say, okay, well, that's not enough bandwidth for us to use, so I'll tell you what. We're going to cut off our service to Entirely. all Verizon users. You can't use our service because we can't yeah. provide you with quality service, and that is enough, I would think, if Netflix did it, to raise hell with Verizon subscribers, and they would be going to other ISPs in mass. So that's the your free no that's your free solution, your alternative to net neutrality. Is but there are other ISPs, Hassan. I mean, the, of course there are other ISPs. There's there's hundreds of them, and if you get a bank of modems and a T3. You can start your own ISPs, or if not a bank of modems, get yourself a big ass wireless Wi Fi broadcast. Uh, now, I, you I should be freer work. to do that, but that's a problem of too much government, not too little government. Yeah. If anybody could run their own ISP over, out of their house, then you wouldn't have any problem. I mean, I remember when. Uh, there were tiny little ISPs popping up and shutting down all the time in the 90s when we were using dial-up. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the the claim there aren't any other ISPs may only be true in rural areas, but uh, in in well, you know, it's true of cable services where the municipality says we will only permit one cable service. But that, again, that's not market yeah, failure. In those that's municipalities, government failure. That's, that's most of America. Well, no, but in those areas, there's usually a phone provider that offers internet service. There are multiple wireless providers that offer internet yeah, service. There are there's satellite also providers. Dish Network, right. and you can buy a T3 directly from the phone company or several other companies. You can buy more probably. than a T3 if you there want. There are lots there's of a data technical providers. There's reason why that doesn't work. What's what that? part doesn't work? We just named a bunch um, of for, different for wire, ISPs. For wireless, you have... Um, Wireless has a massive bandwidth overhead. About 50% of your bandwidth for wireless goes towards management and error correction. And then to get faster wireless, you either increase the modulation, which means you add more variations to the signal, but then it's more sensitive to noise, which further increases your overhead. So you get diminishing returns. So within a specific frequency band, you have like a physical limitation in how much data you can transmit at the same time. Well, but uh, but engineering gets over limitations all the time. I mean, there are yeah, new ways I mean, to transmit. Those are those are the technical challenges that we overcome. Right. Uh, you know, the market overcomes these things when there's yeah. demand. There's uh, people that come up with you know innovation. Innovation is sparked by challenges like that. Thank you, Hassan, for the, the call issue. tonight. You know, you can't just turn to the government to solve your problems. And when you end up doing that, you're going to end up being sorry for it later on. I suspect. A lot of these people are going to look back and, you know, wish they'd listened yeah. to some of the libertarians. Well, a lot of these problems are government problems. I mean, you have to remember AT&T had a legally enforced rule that prevented you from plugging any device that they had not approved into their network for many, many years. Technology has always been held back by government, it's true. even though it has made some, I mean, some things like the Internet were produced by government, but they could have been produced better and faster 
uh, by the private sector if government well, vaporware had not existed. It's certain the internet certainly didn't. Uh, you know, it wasn't the government that made the internet. Right, what the rollout, the ultimate. Oh rollout no, absolutely government. not. They created a little bit of uh, bandwidth, but, but Rich, your suggestion is exactly what I was uh, getting at the other night on the program, where I said that this should end up being you know hashed out in the way that the satellite networks and. Uh, channels hash things out there was a disagreement between dish network and fox and one side pulled the plug and said this other side better get their s in gear get it together or we're not bringing their channel back and then you know people spoke up i guarantee that my isp will advertise we don't throttle anybody yep more coming up here 855 450 free this is free talk live shiny badges on your jacket shiny badges This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Wall & Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Wall & Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall & Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. We turn to Washington, D.C., where America's roommates are holding a rally as part of their new One Vote Doesn't Matter political action campaign. The rally, which drew thousands of roommates, ranging from the guy who keeps all of his groceries in his room to the guy whose name the lease is under, is just a part of a surging grassroots movement to spread the message that one person's vote can't make a difference if you really, really think about it. You know, this is like the most important election of our lifetime. We just want to get the word out that it's already been f***ing decided in some smoke-filled boardroom. You know, I pretty much minored in poli-sci, so I think I get this stuff. Joining us now is Jason Copeland at a rally in the nation's capital. Jason, how would you describe the energy there? Hi, Andrea. I'd say it's a definite uh, chill vibe. Uh, I just saw the roommate whose only friend seems to be his younger brother and the guy who just has an air mattress in his room passing out flyers together. Now, the roommates do make some interesting points. The electoral colleges, it is weird. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm.
Welcome back to Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian here. Rich Paul. And Mark. And we'll continue here with your calls about whatever's on your mind or other stuff to talk about, including a shocking story out of the United Kingdom, uh, taking this pedophile cover-up story that we talked about a couple weeks ago to the next level. But first, Mark. Yeah, I was just checking out the video from FortGalt.com of their new project. They're actually using Bensonwood, uh, their Unity project. Uh, Ian, are you familiar with Bensonwood? Don't know anything about it. It is a home builder that is here in New Hampshire. Oh, okay. They make, uh, you know, one-of-a-kind uh custom-built homes, and uh, they're making basically like a condo building or a ski resort, not some vast uh, valley of estates or anything like that. It's What this is, is this is an idea of a Liberty Enclave in southern Chile where people can have little homes, uh, little little uh, accommodations uh, that are established outside the U.S., and I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, project. Go check it out at fortgalt.com. This is uh, it, it's it's very interesting what they've got as far as these rooms and accommodations and uh, they've got some of they really have top tier uh, drawings and videos of these things where they sort of you know drone you around and you take a look and uh, in and out of these things a lot to see there at fortgalt.com it's well worth it there's only going to be a hundred position positions hundred people involved so don't wait um, until the place is full check it out for yourself at fortgalt.com they're uh, they're funding right now. Excellent. All right. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. So it was this Jimmy Savile story that we talked about a week or two ago here on Free Talk Live that was pretty shocking. You know, the idea that this character from television, this popular TV host, uh, was able to molest, sexually molest, uh, people from ages 7 to their 40s while they were in hospital beds at, uh, I forget which hospital it was, but I think it was more than one, actually, in the United Kingdom, and he was essentially protected by people within the system. Now, Rich Paul, you said denial is very, very powerful, and and that many of the people who uh, were protecting him may not have actually believed that he could do the things that he did. But mm-hmm. the thing is, there were multiple reports, dozens of reports over you know a number of years. I mean, it was over a few decades, but mm-hmm. there were a lot of reports. Something to where eyebrows should have been raised, investigations should have been you know rendered. Mm-hmm. But it didn't happen, and it's pretty disturbing. Now it's gone to the next level. This one actually doesn't mention – this story here from the dailybeast.com doesn't mention Saville, but it's uh, it's telling that it's coming from the same country here, and it's sort of the same kind of cover-up. Story from the Daily Beast, how Thatcher's government covered up a VIP pedophile ring. London, a newspaper editor – was handed startling evidence that Britain's top law enforcement official knew there was a VIP pedophile network in Westminster at the heart of the British government. What happened next in the summer of 1984, talking about 30 years ago, helps to explain how shocking allegations of rape and murder against some of the country's most powerful men went unchecked for decades. Less than 24 hours after starting to inquire about the dossier presented to him by a senior Labour Party politician, the editor was confronted in his office by a furious member of Parliament who threatened him and demanded the documents. Quote, he was frothing at the mouth and really shouting and spitting in my face, Don Hale told the Daily Beast. He was straight at me like a raging lion. He was ready to knock me through the wall. Despite the MP's explosive intervention, Hale refused to hand over the papers, which appeared to show that Leon Britton... Margaret Thatcher's home secretary was fully aware of a pedophile network that included top politicians. The editor's resistance was futile. The following morning, police officers from the Counter-Terror and Intelligence Unit, known as the Special Branch, burst into the newspaper office, seized the material, and threatened to have Hale arrested if he ever reported what he had found. Hmm. It didn't take him decades to respond to that, did it? It didn't take uh, who decades to respond? It didn't take the police decades to respond to to the the newspaper reporters. Right, to the threat to their legitimacy. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Well, I mean, you know, we've said over and over on this show that the the state is there to protect and serve. Protect and serve itself. And so when the state's threatened, it's on the ball. More than 30 years later. But, you know, Mark, I mean, just 
to, before we go on here, you're right about that. But this wasn't a threat to the state itself, unless, of course, this network was widely known and sort of existed across a large swath of it. Right. If it was just like one perverted politician who was molesting, you know, some children somewhere, they probably would have cracked down on that. But if the, if this documents or these documents that this reporter had sort of indicted a multitude of politicians. I mean, we've had people call the show before, and I think, you know, Mark, I think you've snickered at them uh, with the suggestion that there are these sort of underground perv networks in the world of Washington, D.C. Oh, politics. Yeah. I've, I've snickered it at is them. a common theme in the conspiracy theory world, and actually having something very similar to what they've uh, described unearthed should make reasonable people take you know, take a look at their claims. Yeah, well, I want to sit here and I'm listening for the facts. Um, I'm not listening for people just talking. Um, if somebody wants to just talk, then yeah, they're putting their reputation on the line. If they're an important person and they're well connected, then I suppose that has some bearing. But many times we've just heard people on the internet saying this thing or that thing. More than 30 years later, an inquiry into allegations of child sex abuse rings, murder, and cover-ups has been launched by the British government after Scotland Yard detectives said they believed statements by victims who claimed they were systematically abused as young boys at sex abuse parties attended by judges, politicians, intelligence officers, and staff at the royal palaces. Mm. So, so we're talking about two different time frames here. You got the 1984 range mm -hmm. where this reporter was threatened and, you know, scared into submission to not go forward with this. And now today, 30 years plus later, where it looks like Scotland Yard is actually looking into this finally, now that everyone involved is pretty much dead. So in 1983, a controversial MP, that's Member of Parliament, Jeffrey Dickens, had made a series of incendiary claims about active pedophiles in the corridors of power. He handed a file containing the names of alleged perpetrators to Leon Britton. Now, if they were pedophiles, they're not going to stop in 1984, right? Um, Correct. You know, so this is going to continue on. They're probably going to add people to their ranks as yes. the— uh, as this uh, this scheme continues on, because they need to you know, they need to, to to incriminate more people, right? Like once you're once you're involved, then you can't t can't roll. So now remember, uh, Leon Britton, the name from earlier, that's Margaret Thatcher's home secretary, uh, that was allegedly aware of the pedophile network, and that's the person to whom this controversial MP Jeffrey Dickens handed the file over to. So he didn't know. Right. The, the MP that had the information about this network gave the information to this top cop guy, not knowing that he was also the top cop was already aware of it mm. and was allegedly part of the cover up. So he handed him this file and then publicly the authorities shrugged off the claims and no trial or prosecution would follow. The dossier mysteriously disappeared. Yeah. Decades later, Mr. Britton, this top cop guy, claimed he had simply handed the papers to his subordinates to investigate and heard no more about it. So, pass the buck. It wasn't his fault. He was given this file. He's a busy top executive. He handed it off to someone else, and that was the end of that. his involvement in the case. He doesn't know what happened to it. Last year, he was forced to clarify his statement when it emerged that he had later written to Dickens, the MP, to say the initial investigation had been deemed, quote, worth pursuing by investigators. It is now claimed that confidential home office papers collated by Baroness Castle of Blackburn and passed to Don Hale, editor of her local newspaper, The Bury Messenger, claimed that Britain had paid an, uh, played an active role in overseeing investigation into the pedophile network. Leon Britton was mentioned in everything you picked up. His fingerprints were over everything. He was the instigator, said Hale. He really had a finger on the pulse. He wanted to know everything about it. All the documents were CC'd back to him, or it was an instruction directly from Leon Britton. Britton, a protege of Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, had been promoted to Home Secretary at the age of 43, making him the youngest person to preside over Britain's domestic law enforcement and national security apparatus since Winston Churchill before the First World War. He died in January, by the way, of this year. Britain had been accused of raping a woman and sexually abusing boys. He denied the allegations and was never charged, although police investigations have continued after his death. Baroness Castle, then Barbara Castle, a Labour member of the European Parliament, told Hale she didn't trust Britain to investigate the allegations thoroughly. Quote, Barbara never said he was a pedophile. She was just very, very hostile about him. She said, quote, he's the last person you want this to go to. 
which inferred that he was somehow involved, said Hale. That infers that, yep. Worried about the integrity of the Home Office investigation, Castle had tried to interest the major newspapers in the classified documents, but she turned to Hale when they rejected her, her overtures. She was saying, I've been everywhere else. I've been to the Nationals. Nobody would touch it with a barge pole. But what do you think? Hale recalled. As a journalist, of course, I was interested. We'll continue the story here from the Daily Beast about this cover-up of a pedophile ring at the highest levels of government in the United Kingdom. And is that the only place something like that exists? It's Free Talk Live. Well, I did it. I finally left the Empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile, I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kingman, the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.80 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $295. Antiwar.com reports U.S. officials continue to talk up weapon shipments to retaliate for ceasefire violations in the Ukrainian civil war. But while everyone wasn't paying attention, something strange happened. The ceasefire started working. German Foreign Minister Frank Walter Steinmeier confirmed in comments yesterday that the violence has dropped dramatically and that there are not many question marks remaining on the ceasefire. Even Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko is now conceding that the rebels did indeed withdraw their heavy weaponry as required by the ceasefire from the front lines. Though far-right paramilitaries on the side of the Ukrainian military and some small factions of the rebellion continue to say the ceasefire does not apply to them, the ceasefire is clearly holding and violations are becoming less and less common. There's a palpable opportunity for both sides to reach a settlement now and less and less excuse not to do so. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports North Korea's search for external sources of income was brought to the attention of officials in Bangladesh at an airport in Dhaka when a North Korean diplomat tried to transport $1.4 million worth of gold bars into the country on Friday. The North Korean national Sun Yung Nam was accused of smuggling in 170 gold bars. Bangladeshi customs officials said the gold was most likely headed for a local criminal racket in order to raise cash for North Korea. North Korea has been isolated from the financial system through a number of U.S. and U.N. sanctions, and according to the Heritage Foundation, the secretive country has been connected to drug smuggling and money laundering in other parts of Asia. On January 2nd, in response to a cyber attack, on Sony Pictures in November, the U.S. Treasury was granted the authority to place sanctions against individual North Koreans. The Treasury had said the latest U.S. sanction allows a broadening of its authority to increase financial pressure on North Korea. The economic pressures on Pyongyang also have recently intensified. Reliable trading partners like China cannot be counted upon as a destination for North Korea's coal, which along with iron ore comprise 60% of North Korean exports. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports the University of Oklahoma closed a fraternity linked to a video of students singing racial epithets, ordered its members to move out of the house, and labeled the actions of those involved disgraceful. University President David Boren said on Monday, effective immediately all ties and affiliations between the university and the local Sigma Alpha Epsilon chapter are hereby severed. Members have until midnight on Tuesday to vacate the premises. People could be seen loading goods into moving trucks behind Behind the fraternity house on Monday. In the 10 second video posted online on Sunday and replayed by media outlets, students on a bus chanted in unison using offensive language referring to black people and vowing to never admit them into the fraternity. It was not immediately clear when the video of students on a bus chartered for a date night was taped. After verifying its OU members were involved, Sigma Alpha Epsilon's national headquarters said, We apologize for the unacceptable and racist behavior of the individual individuals in the video, and we are disgusted that any member would act in such a way. Sigma Alpha Epsilon chapters had been punished before over racially charged incidents at other campuses. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After excitedly posting an image of a Lamborghini Rebenton to his Facebook account earlier this afternoon, 38-year-old little boy Nick Weber talked to Onion reporters about his passion for fast cars. When I saw that car, I was like, whoa, it was so cool. I had to show it to all my friends. I like red cars the best, but only ones that are really, really fast. I can't wait to get one when I'm older. I'm going to get the fastest car in the whole world. <laughs> Though Weber also frequently posts about his other interests, which include motorcycles, fighter jets, and Marvel superhero Iron Man, the nearly 40-year-old small child confirmed that sports cars are his favorite, and the picture of the bright yellow Lamborghini has already garnered 15 likes and 9 comments from other enthused middle-aged children who are friends with Weber on the social networking site. My best friend Bradley, he sent me a picture of a blue convertible that's so awesome, it has these big wheels, and even has a racing stripe on it. After watching several online videos of fast cars and eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch, the homeowning little tyke went to his room to take a nap. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. Sharing with you the beginning. We just got through the very first portion of the uh, story from thedailybeast.com. If you weren't tuned in last hour, quick recap for you here. There's... Uh, situation involving some high-level government officials in the United Kingdom from the mid-1980s. 
where there were cover-ups going on and presumably continuing uh, past that point involving people as high up as the Home Secretary for Margaret Thatcher, a man named Leon Britton, who was allegedly fully aware of a pedophile network that included top politicians. There have been allegations that are now being taken seriously by Scotland Yard, according to the DailyBeast.com, uh, from back in the 80s where young boys at sex abuse parties claimed they were uh, essentially molested and or raped by judges, politicians, intelligence officers, and staff at the royal palaces. There was information brought to this uh, reporter, a newspaper editor, uh, whose name is Don Hale, and he was uh, one of the only people willing to even look at this, according to someone by the name of Baroness Castle, of Blackburn. She came to Don Hale after the national papers essentially ignored her request for them to look into these allegations. I've got to say the allegations are so outlandish that uh, it's I, I, I get where they're coming from. I see why they would be just like, I, we don't want to be involved in this. Britain, who died in January, and many of the, the characters involved, the those who are accused, are now dead. So it's convenient that now there's an investigation going on, apparently. Uh, Anyway, he was accused of raping a woman and sexually abusing boys and also allegedly accused of uh, or accused of helping cover up these other politicians alleged acts. So they talk a little bit more about uh, this Barbara Castle character who said that it never said that this character uh Britain or Britain was a pedophile, but she did say that he was the last person you'd want this to go to. She said, I've been everywhere else. I've been to the Nationals, and no one would touch this with a barge pole. But what do you think? Hale said, of course I was interested. Great Britain's notoriously tough libel laws ensured that obviously he couldn't repeat the allegations included in the Home Office papers that about 16 members of Parliament and members of the House of Lords and 30 high-profile figures from the Church of England, private schools, and big business were members of and advocates for the what's called pedophile information exchange. So they they mentioned private schools here, but private schools, as I understand it, in uh, the UK are public schools, as they would be referred to here in the okay. US, and that public schools in the UK are what we would refer to as private schools. Interesting. I've never heard that. I'll so, take your word for it. Yeah, that's true. I have heard hmm. that, you know... That it's confusing. Speak, speaking as a guy from Bradenton, Florida, I have heard that there was, you know, that a certain level of homosexuality that would go on at these uh, public schools. Uh, for at the, the private schools, you mean? No. Well, it well, goes on at boarding at all boys boarding a, a cat, uh, schools in America, too. But uh, the, England's sort of known for it, as it were. So, um, mm. you know, that's... That, I don't know. I, that might be where all this started from. I have no idea. The shadowy group, which operated partly in the open, campaigned for the age of consent to be abolished and incest to be legalized. It also allowed pedophiles to send each other secure mail and to meet in person. Instead, Hale, the reporter, planned to run a story explaining the Home Office was actively investigating these men and repeat some of the concerns voiced to him by Castle, who died in 2002. He set about contacting some That's of the, the men. That's the Duchess or the Baroness or whatever? Correct. Okay. He set about con contacting some of the men named in the papers and the Home Office for their response. The very next morning, he was surprised to see the 400-pound figure of Cyril Smith, the Liberty Party MP, or excuse me, Liberal Party MP for nearby Rochdale, arrive at the office. "Quote: I'd interviewed him probably four times, and when he came in, I was like, "Oh, hello, Cyril," and he was, "Never mind all that," and he was straight at me. Uh, Hale said, "He said to me quite clearly, I know who's given you this. It's Barbara Castle." I wouldn't say who it was, but it was pretty obvious he knew. He's a hell of a sized guy. He's over six feet tall, and he's huge. Took up three seats. He's not a guy you could deal with easily. He was a horror. Hale managed to stonewall Smith, but the following morning he had more visitors. That's when the special branch turned up, he said. Three vehicles pulled up to newspaper, the newspaper offices, and about 15 men barged inside. Now, I'm curious, Mark, could you mind uh, just Googling real quick special branch and see, like, are they the, the equivalent of the Secret Service? I'm just curious to see what we could compare them to. I don't know, but it sounds like the, uh, the MPs doth protest too much. Two pushed him up against a wall and brandished a search warrant and something they described as a D notice, as in the letter D. The D notice system was established in 1912 and was supposed to be used on very rare occasions when national security could be threatened by a news story. The rest of the men were searching for the files, which they described as stolen. 
Confidential Ooh. Home Office Papers. Uh, special Brands is a label cus- customarily used to identify units responsible for matters of national security. Okay. So, so these are top cops then, basically. So it may just be a celebrity who's being accused, although obviously there are a lot more people being accused, but somebody sees this as a, as a threat to the British government as a whole, or they uh, because that's the pretext upon which they got the warrant. Yeah, exactly. And that there are so many people involved in this that this would be a very uh, deleterious to their legitimacy if it were to get out. And this relates also to the, I mean, how does this relate, I guess, is the question, to the accusations against Prince William? Uh, was I don't it know Prince, what those accusations are. There was a young girl who said that she basically was, well, they called it molestation, but it sounded like she was just working as a prostitute, but her... Uh, her clients included one of the princes, she claimed, and there are pictures of her with him oh. at at a party. And so that there's there may be more going on, and, and if these two are linked, then it's probably a very large thing, and it may even go into the royal family. Yeah, I suspect uh, it does go deeper than you know whatever the surface level has been scratched here. Uh, quote, these bully boys come storming in. They said, we're not here to negotiate. Hand them over or we'll arrest you now. Mm. I couldn't argue because as soon as you open the files, it had got not to be removed, confidential, and for your eyes only, all these sorts of things on them. I wouldn't have a hope in hell legally. I would have ended up in prison and the story would have gone nowhere, he said. The story went nowhere for a generation. A new breed of backbench politicians began to reopen these issues in the last couple of years. Simon Dansuk, an uh, MP for Rochdale since 2010, focused on one of his parliamentary predecessors. In a book published last year, he revealed that Sir Cyril Smith, the man who, quote, had steam coming out of his ears, unquote, as he remonstrated with Don Hale, the reporter, was himself allegedly a predatory pedophile, with more than 140 complaints filed against him. Throughout his life, he had been protected. 140? Yeah, that's a lot of complaints. Oh, my God. When you said multiple... Reports. I was I was thinking that you know maybe there were two or three or maybe five, but 140 throughout his life. Complaints. These aren't people that just you know decided that this is an MP. We can't do anything about it. These are complaints. Throughout his life, he had been protected from prosecution. Among the retired police officers Danzik interviewed, one recalled time special branch officers forbade them from asking a victim about Cyril Smith. So just to be clear here. Lower level cops interviewed by this par- member of parliament made it clear that they were told not to ask a victim about this member of parliament. Told that by the special branch. And mm. you don't forbid questions until you know the answers. Mm. Others. Also, um, I think we should point out that uh, these these top cops have a tendency to sort of protect, right? Like they're gonna they're there to protect the MPs and people like that. Um, in the same way, the sort of the Secret Service has been caught in a few scandals too. Um, supposedly, the Secret Service set up Hillary Clinton's uh, helped helped her with the server thing. C- clearly, these top cops should know that what she was doing was illegal. So. Yeah, I don't know anything about the server thing. Maybe you'll have to tell us about that later, Mark. She ran her own headlines. email server out of her house instead of using her uh, Secretary of State email address, which Obama claims thing, not to have known despite having e- addressed email to her. So she's not allowed to have another email address? Uh, she's not allowed to use it for official business. Oh, I see. Do you want your politicians using email addresses that they can sort of throw away and keep no, secret? No, no, certainly yeah. not. No, I didn't know anything about the story. I'd only seen some headlines. And 855-450 Freeze, the toll-free number. More about the UK and this underground network of pedophiles, the highest levels of government on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Share your thoughts. Honestly, we canceled an appointment to have Jake euthanize to give Dynavite a chance to save this dog's life. Jake is an eight-year-old male Akita. His entire stomach and groin area, his face, his elbows, ears, every orifice was just riddled with yeast and sores. We had a vet treat him, and Jake didn't respond at all. My son heard the commercial for Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Within Four days, Jake 
started to heal. It was the most amazing thing I have ever seen. The yeast is receding, and now his belly is completely cleared up. It chokes me up. It brings tears to my eyes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the Liberty Media Capital of the World, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here and bring up anything you want, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on in at username lrn.fm. Sharing with you a disturbing story from the dailybeast.com about some old allegations that have arisen again. And there's allegedly some evidence for this. A lot of people saying there's an underground network of pedophiles in the United Kingdom government at high levels, as high up as Margaret Thatcher's top cop, essentially, the uh, as they call it, the Home Secretary. They claim he was aware of this pedophile network and actually worked to cover it up. He and his people in the what's called the special branch, who actively apparently told police at lower levels to not ask certain questions of sexual abuse victims about specific politicians who are alleged to have been involved. Well, we found the thing that really works for advertising on Free Talk Live. 
wine. Uh, we have yeah, <laughs> we are apparently <laughs> among the top producers for Cameron Hughes wine. Seriously, that's <laughs> yes. incredible. I'm thank shocked, you. shocked to find out there's gambling going on in here. You're winning, sir. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I guess it doesn't surprise me that our listeners uh, enjoy themselves some wine. Libertarians now and then. love to drink. Yeah, I mean, they drink. And and even the smoke, ones who, guns. even the people who listen who aren't libertarians, probably love to drink. Oh, yeah. well, anybody who lives in a world that is directly opposed to their own beliefs is likely to want to drink. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, what are we talking about here, Mark? What's the deal that people are so excited about? You're getting this feedback. Yeah, there's uh, seventy to hundred dollar bottles of wine, all different types, available from Cameron Hughes. What he does is he goes around and he checks with the top vineyards in the United States. He picks up their excess, as it were, mm -hmm. and then he sells bottles that and sells it under a sort of a, his own label. So right. you won't know what the vineyard is. You just have to trust Cameron Hughes Wine, lot number 420. Something like that. Yeah, that yeah. would be yours, wouldn't it? Um, that's your special yeah. lot number. Um, <laughs> the, that was my lot number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can fight over it. So I'm any, happy to share with Rich. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, yeah, I'm down for some wine. These <laughs> these uh, hundred dollar bottles of wine can get discounted as far down as twelve bucks a bottle. So it's a big savings. And uh, you know they they say seventy percent, but you can do the math. It can be significantly more than that. Mm -hmm. So um, you just go there to chwine.com. There's a microphone in the upper left-hand corner of uh, the, the page there when you go to chwine.com. And the special deal I worked out with Cameron, by the way, he may be coming on the show to talk about post-prohibition United States. Oh, cool. I'm very excited about that. Is uh, The special deal I worked out was free shipping. So you can get these bottles of wine without having to pay shipping, and liquid weighs quite a bit. So this is a big yeah. savings. Go to chwine.com, click on the microphone in the upper left, use coupon code FTL to save on the shipping, and... Uh, Go and, and enjoy now. I've seen our listeners posting on Twitter, on our Facebook group. We've got the Free Talk Live Amplifier group. Listeners have been posting. They're excited to be ordering this wine. I haven't I haven't seen any reviews yet, so I imagine they are about to receive it. But we did. Um, we drank it, and the well, reviews yeah. were all stunning. Well, we liked it, yes, of course. Uh, but, I mean, who doesn't like free wine? Um, <laughs> it's my favorite kind of wine. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to hearing what the listeners have to say about the product once they get it, because I imagine they're going to really like it, too, because it was great stuff. So chwine.com use code ftl to get free shipping the prices are awesome prices those are regular prices you're getting free shipping on these amazing bottles of wine but the free shipping is what doesn't last right that's the special offer yeah that's a special offer so, uh, so yeah, use code go, ftl put your reviews online tag us in it and we'll uh we'll, you know we'll and retweet we it do. we'll do oh, something yeah. yeah all right our toll-free number tonight 855 450 free so we talked about how the special branch officers in the uk for Bade officers, lower level officers, from asking uh, a, a sexual abuse victim about Sir Cyril Smith, who was this 400 pound member of parliament who came in and threatened the newspaper reporter or the magazine, whoever he is, the reporter here, who's been doing the investigations on this back in the 1980s. Others remembered the day Smith was allowed to walk, Smith is the MP, was allowed to walk out of a police station. Again, he has 140 complaints against him. He's now dead. Uh, without charge, despite indecent images being found in his car after an unexplained telephone call from London. It wasn't just special branch that seemed to keep the, uh, the, the MPs, the members of parliament, out of the clutches of the law. In a candid interview for the BBC in 1995, Tim Fortescue, a conservative party or former conservative party chief whip, described the grubby calculations routinely applied within political circles of the elite. Quote, anyone with any sense who was in trouble could come to the whips, tell them the truth, and say now, I'm in a jam, can you help? It might be debt, it might be a scandal involving small boys, or any kind of scandal which a member seemed likely to be mixed up in. They'd come and ask if we could help, and if we could, we did. We would do everything we can because we would store up brownie points. That sounds a pretty nasty reason, but one of the reasons is if we can get a chap out of trouble, he'll do as we ask forevermore. This is one of the things oh, yeah. that scares me the most about the NSA spying um, on uh, emails and that sort of thing. Because mm, they have the dirt on the politicians, This right? kind of stuff. Once you have that uh, that power, then it you, you just perpetuate it. Yeah, well, if you're a political ex activist, I can tell you from experience that you have to live your life so you would not be afraid to sell the family parrot to the town gossip. 
Portuguese callous words could have come. I've never even considered selling the family parrot, I can say. The uh, words could have come from a script of House of Cards, the original British version of which was first broadcast in 1990. There's growing evidence that MI5 and MI6, Britain's security services, took a similar view. MI5 is alleged to have repeatedly blocked investigations into a sex abuse ring at the Kinkora Children's Home in Northern Ireland in order to protect its intelligence gathering operation. The longtime deputy director of MI6 and former high commissioner in Canada, Peter Heyman, was himself allegedly a pedophile and was ultimately named as such in Parliament by Jeffrey Dickens, one of the members of Parliament. Heyman had been caught with explicit material in 1978, but no charge was brought. Secret files discovered at the National Archives this year revealed that the attorney general at the time believed it wasn't in the public interest. Now, when they say the public interest, that's code. What does that code actually mean? The government's interest. Exactly. That's what they call themselves. They call themselves the public. The public. They're public servants. They're serving the government. Public is code for government. It certainly isn't code for you and me. Prime? Yeah. Especially if you're one in of these the kids series, getting buggered. The, in the series, The Cronies, they have a uh, so character funny. named B- Big G who represents government power, and his face is a mirror because he claims to be you You. and me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so just as an aside, The Cronies is hilarious. You turn me on to this, Rich. Uh, It's an animated short series available on YouTube that is this fictional uh, sort of toy series, the toy toy line, Um, if you will. Well, it's basically the implication is that there's a cartoon behind the marketing, but they produce more marketing than cartoon, which is true of a lot of kids' shows, too. Um, And yeah, they do have the series of, of toys and the commercials for... For the toys. Um, and they're very loud, and they got the kids with, you know, the the toy just pushing it in the camera. And it, it looks like a, a, a legit toy commercial from, say, the early 1990s or something like that with the cartoon characters and everything. And anyway, yeah, it's all please about— Please Google the cronies yeah. with a K. It's all about the government corruption, and it really makes fun. It's kind of got a libertarian editorial it's, viewpoint. It's got to be made by libertarians. Yeah, it's, it rocks. It's pretty good stuff. All right, so more coming up on the pervert files in— in the United Kingdom. We'll come back with it here in moments. It's Free Talk Live, plus your calls as well. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. 
For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm gonna tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm gonna tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. We're talking about a fairly lengthy story, but just absolutely shocking uh, about some allegations that are confirmed. I mean, th there's a lot of links in here that I'm sort of overlooking because obviously in the interest of time, we're not going to follow the links in the story. But as an example... We don't um, give footnotes, though, on the radio. I mean, there's yeah. just you can't. I um, mean, this is this is not just like some set of allegations. There's a lot of confirmation that's coming out. Uh, the allegations are regarding uh, the 1980s, 30 years ago top-level people within the United Kingdom government alleged to have been involved with essentially a pedophile ring that was being covered up at the highest levels of government by essentially the top cop preventing lower-level police from doing investigations into certain people. Uh, Leon Britton, Margaret Thatcher's home secretary, even Thatcher herself got involved in playing protection, according to the what's going to come next here in this story that we're going to share with you in a moment. But first, Mark, how can one go and get some Bitcoin. I know Johnny Ray called me up today saying he was really excited that he thought he was ready to buy some Bitcoin. And I said, well, you need to go to expresscoin.com because he wanted to know if I would sell it to him. And I'm like, I don't want to sell my Bitcoin. <laughs> you need to go to expresscoin.com because he thinks the Bitcoin price is going to go up. It's starting to creep up right next to 300. Yeah, it was an up. Well, it hit 300 on some exchanges today. But oh, really? It's, it's very close. And it seems like it's going to uh, continue to, uh, to to keep going. So, well, you never know, but it, it, you know, it's a, it's speculation, but it's my speculation. That's my, that, that's my belief. So you can go to expresscoin.com and get your bitcoins, Litecoin. Um, they, they've got Dogecoin and several others over there too. You just send a check or a money order, and uh, they'll get it to you, whether you're in the U.S. Or, or Canada. Now, I've done a lot of business with them. Ian, uh, you've done some too, right? Mm -hmm. Back when they had a previous name. As well. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what that was. I uh, couldn't either. He asked me today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I think it's cash into coins. That's right. Com, but you're right. Yeah. We're supposed to forget that anyway. So, Express right. Coin is what you're supposed to remember. If you can. Uh, you I was can, remembering Express Coin. They've done a good job with it. They've got an app to make it easy. So, you can use coupon code FTL. They've even got a coupon code for us. If you buy less than $40 worth of whatever cryptocurrency it is that you buy, you can um, do it with no fee at all. From expresscoin.com. So it's press, expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL when you buy. Thanks so much. Margaret Thatcher herself getting involved in this cover up of the pedophile ring in the United Kingdom's highest levels of government. We'll tell you more about that coming up. First, we've got Jim in Raleigh, North Carolina, listening to Talk Radio 850. Hello, Jim. Hi, this is Jim. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, You're on the air. 
Uh, listen, uh, I was wondering if y'all had heard about the Franklin cover-up that uh, was involved with Boys Town. Um, it was back about the same time period, and uh, it involved some famous people, some politicians at the time. But there was a um, documentary made that was supposed to be on like the Discovery Channel, but that was uh, uh, kind of covered up. Too. Now you said the Franklin cover up. What is Franklin? Yeah. Well, um, I can't remember the exact state, but it was like Franklin County, Nebraska. Uh, but it was involves Boys Town. Yeah. Which and is, what is uh, that? Boys Town is a place where um, boys that are homeless uh, go to, and Uh-oh. it was, uh, <laughs> and um, it was like. Uh, uh, um, well, there was like religious uh, uh, authority over the place, uh, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but over the years it, it, things happened. But um, is that was, the uh, thing that's been around for decades that Jimmy Cagney uh, advertised that, way back in the day? Yeah, that's the same Boys Town, but talking about modern day. Uh, right. And right. when was this cover up? The the also the eighties, around the same time frame the as the 80s, UK one? About the same time. Uh there was somebody named uh, Larry King, which is not the uh, talk show host that was involved in it. Um it was a big scandal, but it was really covered up. It was, it's on the internet. Um uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's called the Franklin Cover Up. And there is actually a documentary that was made for the Discovery Channel, but that was covered up too. There was hushed up. Um I can't remember the name of the title, but there's several versions on YouTube that you might find is very poor quality, but it's still out there. Jim, did and, you believe uh, the allegations about that? Uh, well, you know, if I, if y'all believe about what's going on in England, I'm sure it's going on in the United States, too, because you look at how politicians get controlled and blackmailed uh, mm-hmm. to do what they're doing. I mean, you know, there's bribery and blackmail in high office. To just keep people from, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah, I've always found it plausible. I mean, people in positions of power are going to use that power in the ways that they darn well please. And if they have perversions, they're going to use it in that way. Um, so it doesn't surprise me at all. But up until this point, there hasn't really been a whole lot of evidence of it. Now this is getting out there about what happened in the UK. Thanks for bringing that up tonight, Jim. I appreciate yeah. hearing oh. from you. The well, not, you. not only will the uh, government agents act like perverts if they are perverts, but people who are perverts are going to be drawn <laughs> Towards to any position where they have power over others. Especially a place like Boys Town, which the sounds power like— power to compel. It's full of it. Well, I mean, this place, Boys Town, you're, you're dealing with homeless, uh, down-on-their-luck, young teenage boys who, you know, they, they're looking for help, and they're at probably at the most vulnerable point in their entire lives. Yeah, predators yeah. tend not to target those that are, um, you know, wealthy or powerful or come from good families and things like that. They so, occasionally do, but it's a lot easier to make a stink out of it. The longtime deputy director of MI6 and former high commissioner in Canada, Peter Heyman, was allegedly a pedophile and was ultimately named as such in Parliament by one of the members, Jeffrey Dickens, we mentioned earlier. Now, Heyman had been caught with explicit material, but no charge was brought. Secret files have been revealed this year that the attorney general at the time believed it wasn't in the public interest for Heyman to be prosecuted. Prime Minister Thatcher herself ordered his depravity to be concealed from the public. And that's linked to a completely separate article uh, published over at the independent.co.uk that's, you know, Headline, Thatcher stopped officials publicly naming Sir Peter Heyman as suspected pedophile, published in February of this year. So a lot mm. of the this this information is just now coming out. Yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it, you know, when, when you're a politician, you're put in some position, you say to yourself, well, this important thing that needs to happen is going to be put in jeopardy, whatever that might be. I don't know. Call it health care. Call it a, a particular war they want to fight, whatever it might be. Um, if this person gets, uh, you know, if this blows up, cover it up. Thatcher must also have known about the allegations against her home secretary, Leon Britton, because 1984's most explosive gossip had appeared on the pages of the scurrilous Private Eye newspaper. Her bodyguard, Barry Stevens, now says he personally warned her that another of her most trusted lieutenants, Sir Peter Morrison, had also abused underage boys. She appointed Morrison to run her 1990 re-election campaign regardless, time and time again. 
Crimes were reported, but voices from above silenced the complaints before they came to court. Carl, who does not wish to give his second name, told the Daily Beast that this culture of secrecy, which had apparently paralyzed the British legal system, helped to scare off victims who wanted to report their powerful abusers. Mm -hmm. Carl was abused by a pedophile ring from the age of seven, and the emotional and physical torture went on for nine years. Some of his attackers, he says, were men with influence and authority. Quote, the authority is not what stops people from speaking out. It's the fear that is instilled by these people. It appears the cover-ups did happen, and it makes survivors very wary because you don't know who you can have confidence in to report. How do you know the person to whom you're reporting is not, in point of fact, in on the cover-up? Well, that's happened uh, in, right. in the story mm -hmm. here. And, and that's, that's especially bad when, when these are agents of a violently enforced monopoly so there's no private security company you can go, you can to, go to and to, say, right. I've been harmed. There's nothing outside this system. There is only Zool. <laughs> One of the people who dedicated their lives to amplifying the voices of the victims, trying to ensure the powerful would be held to account, was Liz Davies. In the late 80s and early 90s, she was a social worker in Islington, North London, with an unusual problem. Teenage boys, usually so reluctant to seek help, would line up outside of her office on Hornsey Road, waiting to come inside. She would later discover that the International Office of the Pedophile Information Exchange, we mentioned earlier, this is the apparently the name of this group that were, were, were they had members in you know, the highest levels. And this isn't a law enforcement group. This is a group of pedophiles. It's not information about pedophiles. Correct. This is a group of pedophiles, some of whom were in law enforcement. Uh, others in the judicial system, others the members of parliament, uh, others in the royal family, kind of the royal building or the royal staff, I guess. Uh, 855 450 free. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. How fast are new Allegra gel caps? I didn't know you got a cap fast. How strong are new Allegra gel caps? Ten more logs to go strong. Non drowsy Allegra gives you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin, and stays strong for 24 hours. It's relief when the pollen's off the chart strong, even in the convertible. New Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster, nothing's stronger. Guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free here and bring up whatever's on your mind. 855-450-FREE is the number. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Coming up, Mark, you're going to talk about treason. Someone may be facing some treasonous charges for something. I'm treason seeking out a foreign politician in the United States being welcomed. That's the idea. Yeah. So uh, we'll share that with you when we get the chance. But we're in the middle, and we'll also get to your phone calls. I want to wrap up this story from the DailyBeast.com. And there's you can continue to dig into this. Again, and I'll link to this on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, but in the Daily Beast story, they link to other stories that back up the claims that they're making here. Uh, like, for instance, that Margaret Thatcher in the mid-1980s actually used her own authority to help cover up alleged uh, child abuse by higher-ups in her government. The allegations are, and there have been several uh, in this particular story, that there's a pedophile information exchange. Now, presumably that was what they called themselves, I guess, uh, this group that essentially was made up of some of the highest levels of government, uh, members of parliament, people in, in law enforcement, people in the judicial system, staff at the royal family. Wow. And uh, essentially that they were being covered up, all of the allegations, multiple allegations, one member of parliament had 140 complaints against him. No charges were ever brought, even though there allegedly was evidence. It was just covered up or and or the lower level cops were pro- prohibited by the so-called special police or whatever they called themselves uh, to the highest cops to uh, you know prevented from asking the right questions of these alleged abusers. Anyway, well, I've got a lot of feeling. I uh, I feel for these kids because I was getting assaulted in a military academy at about the same time. Really? How uh, old yeah. were you at the time? I was uh, thirteen, and well, I these never guys... reported. I just learned to fight and whoop the guy. But well, in um, this, just within this article, we've seen the ages have gone as low as seven in this yeah. case. So it's you know this isn't all young teenage boys or anything like that. This may very well be yeah, a number this goes of children down to children, and yeah. that's. So going on here, uh, this uh, there's a lady here, social worker, Liz Davies. She said in the late 80s and 90s, she was a worker in uh, North London, and her problem was that teenage boys would line up to come inside her office. Normally, these teenage boys uh, would be reluctant to seek help, but she would later discover that the International Office of the Pedophile Information Exchange was just a few hundred yards from her desk. And her patch was home to a host of prolific prolific child attackers linked into a network of powerful abuse rings that stretched from Westminster to Northern Ireland, Wales, and the island of Jersey in the Channel. In 1990, she raised concerns at a local council meeting that a large number of boys in the area were showing signs of abuse. She claimed that Margaret Hodge, then leader of Islington Council and later the Minister for Children under Tony Blair, oh my God. ignored her warnings. It was 2014 before Hodge would apologize for her, quote, shameful naivety. Now that's linked to as well. The, uh, they link to another story from The Telegraph in the U.K. In failing to properly investigate the claims of abuse, she is now the chair of the Public Accounts Committee, which is responsible for oversight of all government spending. 
Determined to continue her own investigation into the abuse, Ms. Davies, the social worker, began working with a colleague in the police force to gather more evidence. She said, we started interviewing a lot of the boys. With this being a small area, I knew them. I knew their families. I'd helped their parents. So I wasn't seen as a bad person. She told the Daily Beast, quote, they didn't like the police because they were always nicking them for things, but I would get them to speak to the police officer. So nicking meaning they would arrest them and yeah. harass them for things. They started putting maps what up. What a surprise. The police officers are after the poor, uh, you know, molested kids and uh, leaving the MPs alone. They started putting maps up around the office, linking the boys, listing those affected and those suspected of abusing them. Quote, we were breaking a lot of ground, she said. Then came a call from the regional headquarters. Davies and her boss and her police counterpart and his boss were summoned for a meeting. We were both told to drop all of our investigations and that we had no evidence and we had no right to be interviewing the boys, she said. So this is from her boss's regional headquarters calls her up. you got to stop this investigation. It was a heartbreaking moment, but this mini-abuse fighting team vowed to continue their work. She said, we made an agreement we would carry on under the radar, and that's what we did. In 1991, their investigations led to the conviction of a fire official called Roy Caterer. When police officials raided his home, they found exactly what her boys had described, along with albums and albums of indecent photos. Mm. Davies thought that her work would finally be taken seriously by the authorities. She was wrong. She had amassed evidence of abuse perpetrated against 61 victims, but she claims council officials continued to tell her to stop causing trouble. A year later, she finally quit social services when she says she discovered that the boys she had been trying to save were being sent back into the Islington Care Home System only to suffer yet more sexual abuse. I was networking these children into another network which was running within care homes. I was handing over the most vulnerable, sexually exploited children to more pedophiles. She said, I have to live with that. Just let me translate what happened there in case it, it, it went over your head. So she was trying to help these teenage boys get, and younger perhaps, right. get out of these situations in which they were being abused by higher-ups in government yep. by getting them into what it sounds like the foster care system, which also held a ring of pedophiles who then proceeded to continue to abuse. How delightful. Davies took a suitcase stuffed with evidence, including graphic photographs, to the Metropolitan Police. She said the well-intentioned superintendent looked at her hall and mournfully confessed that powerful figures still controlled what might be exposed. He said, quote, I won't be able to investigate here at Scotland Yard. If you're in England, I have five words for you. Your tax dollars at work. Mm. That's the story by thedailybeast.com. Well, it's frightening. It makes you wonder how often things like this go on elsewhere, really. It really does. I mean, the, the claims are out there, but... You can't really prove anything uh, other than that. I mean, it's, it's well. You know. Even if you can prove something, you can't take it to the government because they'll brush it under the rug. At least that's what's been happening for the last few decades. Now there seems to be interest in this story after many of the main characters have passed away. So the people, if anybody actually ever gets prosecuted about it, it's going to be the younger, probably poorer people who were. Like the go-to people in the system, but the guy the driving the car, the guy driving yeah. the car, the guy providing security, and don't get me wrong, they deserve to be prosecuted if they knew what was going on. But the principals will never be prosecuted. So let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Our toll-free number is eight fifty-five four fifty free. You can also bring up anything that happens to be on your mind, and that's what Samuel has been waiting patiently to do here in Nashville. Samuel, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Rich and Mark. Huh? Hey, you're on the air. Man, thanks. Um, I had a question for you guys about, have you ever heard of the uh, adverse possession? Yes. Adversely possessing property? Sure. Okay, well, um, I did a little research, and apparently um, you have to file some kind of uh, liens against property before um, it can be sold if you want to uh, adversely possess it somehow. Is that the correct process? Uh 
I would imagine because adverse possession is a uh, informal process. And for for those who don't know what it what is, is it? adverse possession is when you live on a piece of land for a sufficient amount of time. I believe it's 15 years in New Hampshire. And if the owner doesn't notice you, the state will transfer possession to you. And... Uh, if you put a lien on it or uh, well they will you will unofficially it own it after 15 years but before you could actually sell it you would have to have clear title and that would probably mean actually going to the state but uh but you know after 15 years my understanding is if he shows up and says get off my land you can say no i right. don't think so this is my land now so what if i um pretend that I was uh, adversely possessing a piece of land for 14 years, 364 days, and then claim to somebody, <laughs> I've been here for 15 years. Like, what kind of... Yeah. How do you prove well, otherwise? Well, your occupation of the land has to be a number of things, and one of I believe that two of them are open and notorious. And uh, notorious means well, I'm anything if not noticeable, notorious. not necessarily not how we mean notorious when we use it. I see. Um, but something that would be noted by the owner if he showed up to check. Another question I had, kind of in the same in the same vein, um, would it be possible to adversely possess uh, public property? The state is specifically exempted from as adverse <laughs> possession, as I understand okay. it. I've had the same thought because I'd hate to jack a person's land, uh, but right. I would love to jack the state's land. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what, one other thing, if, if you've got a second. Um, I recently, my wife's car was uh, towed because it was on the side of the road. And uh, I had to pay about two hundred dollars to the city to get it back. You know how that mm -hmm. situation works. My my idea was I wanted to go do some community service and build the city in the same exact amount. Um, I was wondering if I could uh, billing the city for. Hold on, hold on. I'm curious to know what you mean. Stand by. We'll bring you back here. Billing the city for community service. I'm not sure what he's getting at. We'll uh, we'll clarify with Samuel in moments. Eight fifty five four fifty three. It's free talk live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 877-357-9938. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,166, down $1. Silver opened at $15.76, up $0.03. Cents. 
and Bitcoin is trading around $291.82. Today's metal prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800 686 2237. That's 800 686 2237. In the news, on Monday, the Supreme Court decided not to take up appeals involving torture at Guantanamo Bay. The high court left intact rulings which previously stated the U.S. government could not be sued by a Syrian man who alleges torture at the military site. Another ruling also allowed images which show evidence of a Saudi man's torture to remain blocked from public viewing. The two cases allege physical and psychological torture at the hands of the U.S. government. A historic bill will be introduced today as part of a bipartisan effort to end the federal ban on medical cannabis. The bill is being introduced by Senators Rand Paul, Cory Booker, and Kirsten Gillibrand. Along with ending the federal ban, the bill would also downgrade the status of the plant from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2, officially allowing doctors to recommend its use. The Compassionate Access, Research Expansion, and Respect States Act is aimed at making overdue reforms to ensure patients access the care they need. The bill will be announced at a press conference this afternoon. Beginning in August, incoming students at Ohio State University's Columbus campus will be required to show proof of vaccinations for measles and several other diseases. The university said it will require new students at the Columbus campus to show proof of vaccination against diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, measles, mumps, rubella, hepatitis B, and chickenpox. Students who plan to live on campus will be required to provide proof of a meningitis vaccination. The university will continue to allow new students to seek exemptions based on religious, medical, or philosophical grounds. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? Well, for a limited time only, the Liberty Beat is offering you the chance to save big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Just visit thelibertybeat.com slash advertise and use coupon code GCN in the Describe Your Company section. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A Missouri appeals court judge will be taking over the municipal court system in Ferguson, Missouri. The Associated Press reports that follows a highly critical report of Ferguson's justice system by the U.S. Department of Justice. The Missouri Supreme Court said Monday it's assigning appeals judge Roy Richter to hear all of Ferguson's pending and future municipal court cases. He will take over on March 16th for Ronald Brockmeyer, who resigned on Monday. In response to a recent study that linked fluoride to low IQ levels, Australia's National Health and Medical Research Council has announced it will review the nation's policy on water fluoridation. A spokesperson cautioned that the study was done in China and different levels of naturally occurring fluoride mean that care needs to be exercised in interpreting the results. The decision to review follows the release of two more recent studies that found health problems related to water fluoridation and increased rates of ADHD in children, as well as problems with the thyroid gland. Reuters reports that the International Monetary Fund is assuming Ukraine will be able to pay back $15.4 billion of the $40 billion rescue package from the IMF. The news comes from a source familiar with the IMF's documents. Ukraine is seeking a loan from the International Bank to stabilize their economy. Under the IMF program, Ukraine would be forced to make changes to its energy sector and banking system. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's being called the must-have tech gadget of the year. The Samsung Apex, which hits shelves today, streams video into your left eye, internet into your right eye, and sucks your dick all at the same time. Samsung spokesman Neil Werner is projecting the biggest sales in his company's history. Are you kidding me? This thing does everything, plus it sucks your dick.
all right? And I know what you're thinking. And yes, ladies, there is a version for you that eats you out. Hang it up, Apple. We beat you the punch on this one. Samsung's got you by the balls. In spite of the almost $1,000 price tag, customers are raving about the device. For my career, I do need uh, the internet and TV and my dick sucked all the time. I already have a TV and a girlfriend and a laptop, but to have all those in one device would be really nice. Even a run of bad press about unsafe working conditions in the Apex factory in India have not dampened sales projections. Yeah, 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 factory, factory, switch up, switch up, blah, blah. How about you just plug your eyeball straight into the internet and get your dick sucked? This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free to share whatever you want with us. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and tonight's us includes me, Ian... Rich Paul. And Mark. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features we have waiting for you there. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Samuel is with us here, and he'd begun telling us at the very end of the last hour a story about a cart being towed. Your wife, was it, Samuel? Go ahead and recap that for us, please. Yeah. Um, we ran out of gas, uh, and we walked to with a gas can to refill the gas in the car. Meanwhile, before we got back, our car was towed. So the car was towed. He went to a, a junk, or not a junkyard, but I guess wherever they hold cars, the impound lot. And long mm-hmm. story short, it cost about two hundred dollars for us to get the car out of the impound lot. Okay, I, that stinks. I mean, you're just trying wow. to go get some gasoline, and right, the car is gone when right. you get back. It was not in anyone's way. It was pulled over on the side of the road. That was my main issue. I asked the police, you know, that I was like, was it in anyone's way? And they were, you know, less than nice to me. So I was wondering who in a city. Um, like if a city needs work done on the city, who do they they, they outsource the work? Um, let's say they get an independent contractor to clean up a part of the city or do something like that. Who is the person in a small municipal situation that uh, deals with the billing and what's that? Is there a special? Is there a name for that that job? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, in in well, most places it'll be the parking department in the city. That then calls a local towing company with whom they have a contract. Well, this would have been the police because this was along the side of right. the road. No, no. Yeah, that would be a police yeah, no, call. I understand that part. I understand that part. I want to basically get my money back by billing them for some work that I do in the city that only takes me a few minutes. I just want to know who I bill? should bill. I'm, I'm confused. I want to, with, I have my whoever he has to bill. I want, yeah, I just want to bill whoever it takes in the city to get my money back. Basically, How are you so going basically, to they're billing you for work you never asked for in exactly. in to wit towing your car. Yeah, and so you want to do some work that they never asked for and send right. them a bill because Which, course, turnabout is fair play. So this that was, seems reasonable. So this is just for spec right. spectacle, right? You're going to record video of this happening just to prove you know the the inconsistencies here that they can bill you for a tow job that you never requested, but yet you. Perhaps. Will be unsuccessful at billing them for painting something. I'm just hoping that uh, it slides through the cracks. It's just why not try if I can. You think they might pay you know? it? You mean you mean that if you issue the bill to I, the the accounts receipt or accounts payable, right? That's what you're talking about, like accounts payable. You send right. them this bill. Oh, you know, you uh, ordered these services. Now, of course, that's right. technically fraud, um, and they'll come after you well, for no, it, no. likely. Well, well, you don't have to say you ordered these services. You just say, I provided I these them. services, yeah. And yeah, they exactly. might not notice if you send it to the bi- to the address where they get most of their bills. Yeah, I would say that would be the accounts right. payable, depart- payable department of the city of fill-in-the-blank. But this does not construe yeah. Free Talk Live becoming an accessory to your crime. I am not uh, a this lawyer. This is all theoretical. This is all uh, theory I'm just trying to come up with. It's something I was entertaining I was listening to you guys. I was like, they might be slightly interested in this. I know it was off topic. but I think the big question is, what mind. would you perform? What sort of act uh, would you perform? Because, like, for instance, if you went and painted the side of a building, they'll come at you with a vandalism charge for that. Uh, so, right. you know, what no, can you I, do I, that they can't charge you criminally for? I would go out with uh, – I would get some trash bags and pick up trash. In okay. The city. That's, That's a, a pretty one. safe one. Yeah. Um, nobody's going nobody's gonna to get on you for that. Except right. you're doing it at twenty dollars an hour or something like that, right? Like a decent well, hourly rate. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would make it worth my time. Yeah. Like they made it worth my time. Right. Yeah. I think that's an interesting concept. I'd like yeah. to hear about well, how this you. works out. 
Yeah, definitely let us know if, if you take this from theory and into uh, the real world. And Be thank sure you. to mention your cell block uh, number when you uh, when you let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Samuel, for the okay. call tonight. Because we know that there have been people who've done beautification projects and have uh, been attacked by the government. Remember, there was a story about some neighbors who paved over a road. They had a road that was just in absolutely terrible shape. I think that was in the U.K., actually. They uh, they made their road better. They improved it because the, the whatever the county government or whatever they call it over there was refusing to respond to multiple requests over years from the neighbors on this essentially cul-de-sac road that isn't a through street or anything like that. But uh, they were upset because it's doing damage to their cars driving down this road. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was incredibly treacherous for them. So they spent the money. They gathered their own money together. They spent the money to fix the road up. And then they were come after for it. They were threatened. I forget if it was criminal charges or what happened, but the government came after them in that case. Plus, there's examples of people who uh, improve roads by adding like a crosswalk or filling potholes. Sometimes they'll write slow on the street. Right. They've been come after, some of them, with criminal charges for that stuff. So wow. when you do something the government has decided that it is the exclusive provider of, they get really upset. When you live under a government, no good deed will go unpunished. Brian is in Los Angeles. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Rich Paul, and Mark. Hey, guys. Hey, Brian. Hey, you're on the air. About- Thank you. I was talking about net neutrality. You guys were talking yesterday about. I realized there already is a government uh, service that's regulated just the opposite as where they pass net neutrality. This, What's that? Um, well, the services they they provide tiered uh, level of services. They, if you pay more, you get faster service. And uh, if you're a big companies, you could even get independent service. And that's the United States Post Office. It's true. I mean, if you're Amazon, you get Sunday delivery, and if you want to do overnight delivery, you pay extra money. If you have bulk mail, you can do it. So they, they offer all the different type of tiers that they don't want to have the Internet to have. Now, just There's to be clear, I believe the post, post office does contract out high-level uh, like overnight pro, uh, product to FedEx. Uh, last time I saw that. I, I don't know if it's still FedEx, yeah. but I but believe they do that. Mm-hmm. But it's still a federally regulated service that yeah. allows different tiers and different uh, products for people who want to pay. And like say, Amazon is contracted them to do Sunday deliveries in some parts that call it in there. So, mm-hmm. That's an interesting the parallel. Opposite. There you go. So, yeah, yeah, thanks neutrality for is a crock. Thanks, Brian, for the call tonight. Thanks. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. So, Mark, you had wanted to share a story about treason. You don't hear about treason charges being leveled very often, but you've got some possible ones coming. Yeah, so this is... It's, not it's, against you. Against it, not against me. Someone in the U.S. government? Yeah, apparently... Where's the story from? Yeah, um, this is from ReverbPress.com. There are times when the word treason is thrown around lightly. This is not one of those times. And while it may meet the legal definition of sedition more than treason, Republicans have consistently been trying to usurp President Obama's authority by derailing negotiations with Iran. Though their, um, through their invitation to Netanyahu doesn't equate to treason, they're directly contract- contacting Iran's leader to stop the peace process violates federal law and the americans aren't taking it any longer this is he, this person wants you to sign a petition and he uh, takes the side of the americans as though i want to sign his position and because i live on the north american continent somehow he can speak for me but i think it's kind of interesting because there's this act out there called the logan act and this logan act um Let me read this here. Violations of the Logan Act. Even the most staunch Republican cannot deny that directly contacting Iran in an effort to derail the president's authority is a downright shady and unethical. Unfortunately for those 47 Republicans in Congress, it's also treasonous. As it turns out, the Logan Act is a federal law signed in 1799 and last amended in 1994, which prevents unauthorized citizens from communicating with foreign governments for a variety of reasons. And they, uh, they, they actually we should do. say purports to prevent because they do these things anyway. Yeah, they do. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, people in Congress are contacting people in other governments all the time. Mm-hmm. This Logan Act doesn't get enforced and it couldn't be enforced during the Iran-Contra uh, scandal. I don't know how it's going to be enforced here. But it's kind of interesting. This guy, um, you know, is trotting it out here. So the, the Logan Act prevents American, regular Americans 
from from contacting any other foreign government period not just like the 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 ones that are basically, sanctioned basically it's designed to prevent you from carrying on your own private foreign policy uh-huh. apart from what the government is doing let me read the excerpt here from you uh, for you I'll, I'll have it here um in a moment yes we'll do that here and you can share your thoughts with us at 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 Take control of these airwaves here on Free Talk Live or join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. There's more Free Talk Live coming up in moments. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free if you like. Bring up whatever you want, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Mark, where are we going at the end of March? The Texas Bitcoin Conference. It's going to be in Austin at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin on uh, the 28th and 29th of March. It's going to be an exciting event. They've got all kinds of big-name speakers there, including George Gilder, Simbala Nair. That's the uh, IBM's architect of their blockchain technology. She's coming in from India. Uh, oh, it's a she. I didn't realize that. Yes, Simbala Nair ah, is a she. Gotcha. Yep. I If if I didn't make that clear before, I do apologize to uh, Simbala and everyone I'd else. like to apologize as well because I <laughs> referred to the person as a he previously. There you go. So uh, David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Vitalik, Vitalik Buterin. Actually, Vitalik's not going to be there. Um, now that I'm, now that I think about it, it's going to be actually Anthony Diorio is coming in from um, uh, from CryptoKit. Uh, Ethere- yeah, CryptoKit Ethereum, that, that sort of uh, group there. Uh, Charlie Shrim. Gonna be lots of other uh, speakers. It's the Texas Bitcoin Conference. You can go there at texasbitcoinconference.com. If you use coupon code FTL, you'll save twenty five bucks off of your admission price. Another $25 of your admission price will go to, if you use FTL, will go to uh, Sean's Outpost, which is a homeless organization that we've teamed up with to, uh, to to give them a little money. So please use coupon code FTL when you go to TexasBitcoinConference.com and sign up. Come see us out there. We had a really great time last year. We'd love to see you there. TexasBitcoinConference.com. All right. So we'll continue here, Mark, with your story. Uh, you've been telling us about some alleged treason charges that may be coming against people. Well, that's pushing it. No? Okay. So summarize what's going on here, because maybe I'm not really... Well, I want to read the Logan the... Act here, an excerpt from the Logan Act. Oh, it said, any citizen of the United States, wherever he may be, who, without authority of the United States, directly or indirectly, commences or carries on any correspondence or intercourse... With any foreign government or any officer or agent thereof, with intent or influence, um, with with the intent to influence the measures or conduct of any foreign government, or of any <laughs> officer or agent thereof, to in- influence the measures. Meaning, that if I read a letter to the UK government saying you need to arrest these pedophiles, uh, that would that would mean I'd be guilty of the Logan Act. In relation or to or any disputes or controversies with the United States. Ah, uh, only with the New York. Okay. Or to defeat the measures of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years or both. Aha, uh-huh. okay. This wow. section shall not abridge the right of a citizen to apply himself or his agent to any foreign government or the gov- agents right. thereof for redress of any injury which may have been sustained from such governments or any of its agents or subjects. Okay. So you can't talk to the members of another government about things relating to the United States? If the United States doesn't like the things you're talking to a foreign government about, then the Logan Act would apply. And so the the claim here is that certain members of Congress reached out to the Iranian government yes. and did that somehow without permission. Aren't they the government? Shouldn't that be okay by the Logan Act? Well, um, the president does have the purview of foreign policy. So. Aha, so Congress is not supposed to do those things. But it does saying. all the time. I mean, it does. But this time regularly. now it's supposedly wrong because it's uh, Iran is the it's idea? This time because some Democrat has gotten it uh, stuck in his craw and he wants to— uh, to run a petition and get uh, some Republicans put in jail or censured or whatever. I imagine it's also some cover for Hillary Clinton's, uh, you know, keeping some a server in her house that was uh, used by her husband during his administration mm. and running her uh, State Department out of her home instead of using uh, using the uh, the government's email address. So yeah, it all seems like a political stunt to me. I don't think there's any there there. So there's not actually treason being charged. This is. Up, up another politician who's trying the, to not get... even just some active little guy on the internet. Oh, so this is this means it's meaningless then. Well, why are we even talking about it? It's meaningless <laughs> if you if you I, I talked about it because I brought it up in show prep and you liked it. Oh, I thought you meant somebody was actually going to be charged with treason for this. No, they don't charge. This is just some guy with a petition for treason. On, this is some guy with a petition on the internet. There's a zillion of those things. <laughs> yes. How many oh, signatures yeah. does he have so far? Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at that part. It's probably it's probably high. I mean, once you uh, once you get enough people to uh, so this is going to be going to be a bunch of Democrats signing to imprison the Republicans. One hundred and eight thousand three hundred and seventy eight. Yeah. So enough to be seen by the Obama administration and be commented on, right? 
Doubtful. Well, there you go. Did they comment on it? What's that? Well, the Obama I mean, administration? Not yet. No. <laughs> and there's no obligation for them to do so, right? I it mean, only if the Obama administration, yesterday. if the Until Obama they comment, we can't say with certainty that it's enough people to make them. If the Obama administration wanted to go after these Republicans, they certainly could do so, and they wouldn't need a petition to uh, to influence them. No, right? Uh, so the toll free number here is eight fifty five four fifty free. But they're not going to do that because they all scratch each other's backs at some level up there. I mean, yeah, it they've appears all got pictures of each other with little boys. Maybe probably the case. <laughs> at least enough of them have those pictures of enough of the people in Congress. Pictures of something. By the way, there's a whole other story here. I don't know if we're going to have a chance to get to it, but uh, the Daily Beast dot com has a story from December victim i watched british mps rape and murder young boys let's go first though to uh let's go to tennessee where will Colley is with us from muslims for liberty hello will yes, hey what's up guys how hey, we doing tonight go ahead sir how we doing tonight guys? good go ahead very cool so i saw something today i thought you guys might be interested in it mostly because it makes you guys uh well just as much the enemy as these people see me uh there is a uh a former police chief from Woodstock, Georgia, who is traveling across the South with a message. Uh, he's giving this presentation at small events and things like that. That's not really what's the most disturbing. Um, the presentation, quote, addresses how ISIS has recently influenced numerous lone wolf attacks against police officers and how ISIS promotes the civil unrest that caused the violence in Ferguson, Missouri. ISIS is responsible for what went on in uh, Ferguson. Uh, well, basically, the gist of his presentation is that ISIS is the reason for the police accountability movement in the U.S. today. No, oh, I and see. And that if you wow. are resistant to police, if you wish to fight back against police, if you are a cop blocker, so to speak, then you are being directly influenced by ISIS. Now, the wow, really disturbing okay. part, that's not the disturbing part. Here's the disturbing part. People are taking it's him seriously. Offered as, it's offered as a 16-hour training program <gasps> for law enforcement what? officers that has been done at the Georgia Police Academy, the Georgia Association of Chiefs of Police, the Carrollton Police Department, oh the my. Dawson County Sheriff's Office, the Hinesville Police Department, the Nashville, Georgia Police Department, the Moven Police Department, the Habersham P County Sheriff's Office, the Gwinnett Wasn't County that the Police Habersham? Department. Wasn't that the county that blew up the ba baby's face? Yeah, the Gwinnett County Police Department <sighs> and the Marietta Police Department. It was an ISIS baby, Mark. <laughs> are, have all been given this training course. That police accountability activists and ISIS are the one and the same. Wow, that's pretty scary stuff. Um, I, I know you're on Skype right now. If you've got a link to that story, go ahead and paste that in there. I'll share it out on our uh, Google, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you can, you hang on, Will. I'd like to bring you back. Here. I think we may actually have a call on the line uh, who wants to talk to Will. We'll find out here in a moment what that's all about. 855-450 free. We're with Will Cauley. He's one of the founders of Muslims for Liberty. There's more Free Talk Live on the way. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your product and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. 
If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job Job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If there was a place that liberty minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. Freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. The reason why I reject violence, and part of that is there's a humility in it, and that it, you have to acknowledge that I may not be right. You know, I, 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 I want to have an open discussion with people. Let's, let's talk this stuff out. I'm not going to impose my views on you with violence because I will not presume to be so right that I can that I'm just going to force my views on you. In addition, if your views are so valid and so great, then you shouldn't have to force them on anybody. Then you should be able to persuade folks. Right. Uh, this is the, this Make is the truly better. the acid test of a good idea. If it's a good idea to educate everybody, then you should be able to do it in a free market. If it's a good idea without for force, me, right? Without well, force. That's if you've got enough persuasive ability to convince a majority of people to vote to violently fund something, you've got enough potential to motivate that many people to contribute toward it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll free. Bring up whatever you want. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You can join us online by. Going over to freetalklive.com and enjoying the features we have waiting for you there. Just go there. It's all free, freetalklive.com. As we continue here with you in studio, it's Ian. Rich Paul. And Mark. Rich, you've got yourself a new, not really website, Facebook page at this point. I don't know if it will expand into its own site, but uh, you've launched a, a church. Uh, yeah, it's true. The Church of the Invisible Hand. Now, tell me about it briefly. If you could uh, give the elevator pitch, why should people go and visit this uh, church site? Well, the Church of the Invisible Hand is a church which is based on the writings of our estimated prophets, who include uh, Darwin, Anne Rand, uh, Robert Heinlein, and uh, many other authors. And we basically uh, have a a uh, system of beliefs that's based on two things, peace and love. And peace is embodied by the non-aggression principle, the principle of peace, and love is, Im is uh, embodied by the care that you show to your fellow man. So that's a uh, very simple uh, basis of it. And uh, it's named, of course, for the invisible hand, which was uh, used as a device by Adam Smith in his great book, The Wealth of Nations, which is our first holy book, although there are many others. 
And Have you really read that thing? Good Lord. The Wealth of Nations? Yes, that was the first book dry. I ever read on economics, and I actually loved it, but I had previously read all the works of Shakespeare, so I was prepared for mm. the English. And actually, he's a funny guy. I mean, I remember at one point he talks about export controls on, on gold, and he said, imagine if we did the same with iron to the great supplement of the pots and pans of the nation. Um <laughs> So you want people to visit the website? Um, I do, and the URL is http colon slash slash tr dot im slash uh, c i h, and those are all up all uppercase. The c i h is all uppercase. The c i h is all uppercase. So the uh, domain name it doesn't matter. So without all the http, it's just tr dot im, as in trim tr dot im yep. slash. Uh, C I H Church C-I-H. Invisible Hand. Okay, gotcha. And C I H is all caps. So go and check out uh, Rich's uh, church. I'll post a link up on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. That way, people can easily get to it just by going to those places. Yeah. We'll we have not here. yet hired the temple prostitutes, but they're coming. Let's go to Farah, or not Farah? Excuse me. Let's go to uh, to Will. Uh, Farah's his name on uh, Skype. Will, you're on Free Talk Live. What's up? So you're from Muslims for Liberty. Your website is Muslims, the number four, Liberty, is it .org? Yes. We actually have somebody who's got a question for you. You want to field that? Sure, why not? All right, let's let's do that here. We've got James in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live with Will Culley from Muslims for Liberty. It's funny. I was going to ask Rich Paul when's the last time he's been to church since he accused my uh, he questioned my religiosity last time I was on so-called Free Talk Live. Oh, I'm sorry. But, uh, I thought you had a question for our guest here, James. Did I do. You? Okay, go ahead. I do. Okay. Well, let's, let's keep it to the, the question first. Will Coley, I remember last time I heard you on Free Talk Live was after you got kicked out of Frank Affney's event in Oklahoma City because they don't like political party crashers like yourself and the, the group you came with. I've never been to Oklahoma City, but thank you uh, anyway. When, where was it at again, Then Remind me when you got kicked out of Frank Gaffney's event. You know what I'm talking about, right? I've never been to a Frank I've never been to one of Frank You got kicked out of an event, and you said that men were brandishing weapons. And I went on to your oh, that was, page when it happened. Oh, that was, a, that was Roan County Tea Party. Uh, whatever. And it was a Frank Gaffney event, right? It, it was right. It was. Gaffney. It was. Who is Frank so, Gaffney? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I wanted him to ask. I want him to tell me where I can find. I remember you saying men brandishing weapons were kicked you out of the event. But I do. I went online and I did find a fascinating and frightening clip regarding that incident that you were involved with, Will from Muslims from Liberty. A frightening a woman who looked like, would have scared me if she came to my door during Halloween wearing a bag over her head with eye slits, talking to a camp reporter. Now, any reli- any religion that does that to their women is it, that's a contradiction and an oxymoron when you put liberty after it, Will Coley. But again, tell me where I can find those men brandishing weapons that you pointed at you that you okay. so said on free talk. All right, so you've rambled here. Let's let him uh, answer the question, I'm not please. Rambling at all. All right, well, I'm going to put you on hold. So uh, go ahead, Will. Yeah, I. I'm not even really sure what he's talking about. I, I remember you did call that. in about some sort of event involving some Muslims in Oklahoma, perhaps, at one point, but I don't recall the Yeah, that details. was about a, a week ago. It was a group of libertarians went and formed a human chain between protesters, none of them brandishing firearms, no, though. Um, it wasn't sponsored by Frank. The protest Gaffney, though, um, I've personally he was in any way involved with that I know of. Uh, the only time I've ever had uh, a weapon brandished toward my person was when I asked a no-name speaker who's just a East Tennessee local pastor a question that he couldn't answer at a Roan County Tea Party event, which is literally like a teeny tiny rural county in Eastern Tennessee that you know Frank Gaffney wouldn't piss here. Uh, so I'm really not sure what he's talking about. Now, Will, about. what about the reference to a woman with a bag over her head or something like that? He's talking about a burqa, I think. He's just putting it yeah, in offensive I'm not, terms. I'm not sure what he's talking about there either. My wife doesn't wear niqab. Nobody in my family wears niqab. Um, I don't know very many women personally who do know, who do wear niqab. 
Uh, there was a imam at a mosque I went to once in Orlando whose wife wears, you know, like I, I honestly don't really know people who wear them. So what he's even referring to? It sounds is like you're responsible in his mind for every everything that every any Muslim's ever done <laughs> on the internet. Let's bring him back on here. Well, let him respond to that. Go ahead, James. Only a fool would actually interpret what I've said, like what you just said, Mark, is what I'm implying. But we'll just talk. I'll be your lie. fool, James. You know exactly what I'm talking <laughs> about. I'm a fool oh, for so you. Funny. By the by the way, Mark. <laughs> speaking of God, you uh. You've I'd like to talk about your Christian religion. Get a job. You, the the, the fact is, possible. the Bible says that you'll know Christians. Hey Mark, James, let me complete the, my sentence. No, please. no, you know, I want to now. That is, no, you've you've called not. me into it, James. You have you have raised me out of the. Uh, it's true. Uh, I did ether. bring him back for the intention of responding to Will, but he then brought you up. I, yeah. is all I care is is that uh, you brought me up, and the fact is, is your Christian religion says that we'll know Christians by the fruit of their spirit: love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. And I haven't seen a bit out of that from you. <laughs> Not one bit ever. Uh, hey, Ro hey, uh, disciple Paul. So Mark's allowed to com make comments about me, but I'm not allowed to comment on the comment on so-called free talk live. I immediately get spoken over by the. Pretty person sure you're still comment. here. That, that's yeah. You got something to right, say? You I'm should say it. I, I was, but Mark butted in. And just like Will just told him, absolute lie. He knows what I was talking about. It didn't happen a week ago. It happened some time ago. And a woman wearing a bag over her head with eye slits is a cartoon character or a Halloween character. And not nothing has to, nothing has to do with liberty or freedom or equality or anything of that sort. But you do – I'm not yeah. talking about your wife, Will. I didn't think it was your wife. But you said brandishing weapons, and you're a liar because they didn't point guns at you. You were asked to leave and told to leave, and you didn't want to, and then you got – uh, yeah, I don't think Will out. was at that. So. Oh, oh, no, he's talking about that. All right, okay, go ahead, Will. I'm going to put him on hold so he can know what he's ramble over talking top about of now. Yeah, there was an event. It wasn't a Frank Gaffney event, though. It was uh, some pastor in Oklahoma held a, like, why you should be scared of the Muslims event. Again, local libertarians went and were involved in the defense of the Muslim community. You there. were in uh, Tennessee. And you were not there. No, I was in Oklahoma. I wasn't in Oklahoma. I was in Tennessee. Uh, local libertarian activists were there. Um, and basically what happened was uh, a person from Muslims for Liberty and a young lady wearing niqab went up to the door and were immediately uh, taken away by armed police officers uh, because they wanted her to remove her niqab in order to come into the building. Uh, and uh, when a libertarian activist made a smart comment about it, they forced everyone to leave. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Appreciate it, man. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. You hear that, kid? That's the hum of a well-run facility. You know what I hate hearing? Silence. Silence on a production line means downtime. Downtime means wasted time. Wasted time means wasted money. Silence isn't golden, kid. It's deadly. That's why I love Granger. With a wide variety of the latest products, Granger gets us what we need when we need it to help keep this place up and running and humming away. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System 
system today, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231. And the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey Light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1 877 886 3653. That's 1 877 886 3653. Or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach five into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think Excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Oh, the road. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for you if you dial right now at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you like what we're doing here at Free Talk Live, there are a couple ways to support the show uh, that really help us out. One of them is by shopping with us. You can go to shop.freetalklive.com, enter Amazon through the links you'll find there Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, Amazon US. You click into the right Amazon for you and get your shopping taken care of over at shop.freetalklive.com. And Free Talk Live will get a cut of what it is that you're purchasing. I purchased recently at Amazon uh, some LED light bulbs, uh, which we're slowly starting to replace. You know, the, we used to have the swirl bulbs uh, most recently, but I've been replacing them as they've died off, uh, replacing them with LED bulbs here in the studio. So uh, they're, they're a great price on Amazon. Shop.freetalklive.com. Go there and get whatever it is that you need. And then another great way to support the show is by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier, which you can do for 5 bucks a month. We invest that money into the show, getting out more radio stations around the country and bringing more Internet listeners on board. By the way, I have been putting in brutal days of calling radio stations over the last several days. Uh, there's great news in the radio business, and that is that Dennis Miller is quitting radio. Why is that great news? Because he's, he's, he's terrible. A, he's got a. I've heard he's actually pretty hard to listen to because he's too highfalutin for a lot of people. Okay, like he's well, really, I listened to a show. I thought it was fine. Yeah. It was a little. I always enjoyed Citizen Arcane before he went all neocon. Yeah, I, he claims to be a libertarian, but he's not. He's not a war foreign monger. policy. Yeah. I thought he was. Uh, I, I thought his show was a little too sort of inside jokey. Yeah. You know. So anyway, it's gone after he had a good run. I mean, to be fair to the guy, he he kept at it for I think something like eight years. Wow. And, or really? maybe it was a little. Maybe it was a little less. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm confusing him with Roger Hedgecock, who's also leaving the airwaves. Um, but these two talk show hosts, Dennis Miller, Roger Hedgecock, between the two of them, they probably have 300 affiliates. 
And that's a lot of radio stations that are going to need new programming by the end of this month. They're both done like March 27th. So we're two and a half weeks away from the end of those radio shows. In point of fact, uh, it turns out Dennis Miller actually walked out about a week ago, apparently. So his network is playing refeeds, as they call them in the business, reruns. Uh, So all the stations that are airing Dennis Miller have basically been screwed by Dennis Miller. What happened was the uh, at the end of February, the network that he's on announced, oh, Dennis Miller's moving on, but we're going to replace him with this other guy. And so, you know, you radio stations, you can just stick with the stick with us. We'll just keep put this new guy on. And, you know, that's that. But they said Dennis's show was going to continue until the 27th of, of March. But apparently Dennis decided he had better things to do. So he took a walk. And left on the 2nd of March, basically leaving the remaining 25 days of uh, his supposed time that he was supposed to be on air to be filled by reruns. So radio stations all across the country right now are probably fuming mad over this because nothing's worse to a talk radio station, which deals in sort of the currency of now, things that are happening in the world. What's the news of the day to be playing shows that by the time the end of the month comes up are going to be at least a month old? is not something a talk radio program director wants to do. So if you happen to have a radio station locally that's not airing Free Talk Live and is airing either Dennis Miller or Roger Hedgecock, you should pick up your phone tomorrow and call that program director and say, hey, I like this Free Talk Live show. Maybe you would consider looking at it for a option to replace either Dennis Miller or Roger Hedgecock. That would help me. That's what essentially I do during the daytime. I call radio stations, and if they've heard from listeners saying they want to hear Free Talk Live, that makes them more likely to take our show. So thanks for doing that in advance. If you want to learn more about how to contact a local station, you can go to our Frequently Asked Questions on the subject, which is available for you at local dot freetalklive.com. That'll take you right to the Frequently Asked Questions on how to call or email your local talk station program director. So that's local.freetalklive.com. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Matt is in Jersey City. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Matt. Hi there. Hey, go ahead. I'm calling for one thing, but before I say that, I I just want to say you guys got to stop taking the call from uh, that guy in Arizona. He's really, like, if anything, he's making people turn off the radio when they're listening. Some people like it when, when he calls. Yeah, we've got yeah, to basically. I'm talking about new listeners. New listeners, they're just like randomly skipping through the channel. They hear this guy ranting and raving about God knows what, and I, I guarantee you, people skip over your station because of Dave yeah. and James. There's probably some people who do, but other people, uh, you know, like to hear conflict on the radio. Yeah, we've I've really tried sure, sure. to uh, test this out in our amplifiers group, uh, where we have a, a private amplifiers group. If you want to be involved in it, you go to amp.freetalklive.com. And it's basically 50-50 on this guy. Um, I mean, you know, and it's, and they're hot or cold. They're not uh, um, they're not warm or cool on him. They they, they love him or hate him. But uh, some people think that he's just great radio to listen to and want to hear the host arguing for a little while i thought it was kind of funny but now i realize that sometimes it's just mundane and repeating the same thing over and over again you realize he hasn't called in in over a week right yeah that's true yeah that's not really why i'm calling okay um yeah, sorry, you can't tell an open phone show to ban somebody because you don't like them. I mean, if you don't like what you're hearing on the show, please call in as you have done and bring something else up. The rules on Free Talk Live are fairly yeah. simple. A regular caller, someone who's a known quantity, someone who we can recognize, will not be given priority over people we don't know. So if we've got calls coming in uh, from people that we don't know, we're going to go to them first. Fact is, James was the only one on hold, so he got on the air. Okay, that's fair. Um no, I, I actually did purchase something using Amazon through uh, freetalklive.com slash shop, and I wanted to let you know that. And, Thank you. Uh, the, the thing was that I really wanted to mention for uh, the end of the show was I would really like to have a conversation with you guys uh, with one other person who is email. So if you guys have a host on, I noticed that uh, Ian, you, Ian, and you, Mark, do a great job together, but I've never heard you with a co-host that is a woman, the two of you and a female. Oh, you haven't I been really listening long. That. Well, it's been, I've been listening for a while, and I, I've been waiting for the day. We've had Allie on. Um, Stephanie. Um, we had uh, Objectivist yeah, Girl, Lauren. Them on, but it's Nemesis Jones. James and someone else. 
not James and Ian and a woman. That's what I'm looking for. Because I really want to get a uterus to talk to, to get on this uh, issue. To talk to James in Arizona? <laughs> He's got a uterus? No, no. You want to? Uh, you somebody... mentioned James. I don't know which James you talking oh, about. Did I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. No, no problem. So, um, so you want wh- you want specifically? So we have Danica on on Friday nights, but Mark's not on the Friday night show. So right. you want Mark, exactly. myself, and a female host to be on together? That's just a request. You don't. We have had objectivist to. girl up until a, a few weeks ago when yep. uh, we were having trouble with. I mean, basically, it was hard for her to make the trip from um, from Manchester out here. Yeah. Yeah, and that was yeah. over just a few weeks ago. So I mean, well, that's... certainly okay. So let me let me address uh, as it says, um, as you've said it. We are looking uh, actively for female co-hosts, but we try not to judge based. We try to judge people based on sort of their merit as a co-host, mm-hmm. as opposed to their merit, uh, you know, the genetically. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're we're looking. We want them as much as you do. The advantage to a female co- co-host is is that um, you know when when people are talking, it can be difficult for somebody who's not um, you know a, a fan of Free Talk Live to sort of know who Mark is and who Rich is and who Ian is at any given time when they're talking. So yeah. one is certainly going to know who Sally is, right? If she's talking, right. so mm-hmm. that's an advantage there. Um, already, Ian and my voices are not you know terribly distinct from each other. We've had a long history of female. Female hosts on this program going back uh, as far as Julia, Melissa. I mean, there have been hosts that have been around for for years uh, prior to this. Inevitably, we'll have more females on in the future. Um, so don't worry about it. it. Yeah, we there, want them. There's one specific issue that I know I'm Mark's on the same side as me, and you're on another side. I don't want to bring it up now, but I want to bring it up when there's a third, a fourth person with a uterus in the in the room. Well, normally and we only also, have three hosts, so uh, he's I, considering himself oh, to be in the right. Room. Right, I got you. Right. Okay. Well, very good, Matt. So you I, just, uh, I guess, yeah. stay tuned. Thanks for the call. Uh, so, toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty three. There is a transgendered uh, person who just moved to Keene. I don't know if that would count. It really? Yeah, you didn't know that. I did not. Yeah, there's actually uh, some controversy over some of the things that allegedly happened at the Liberty Forum uh, that has, uh, I guess. This person and another uh, friend of theirs moved to town and then went to the Liberty Forum and did not make a good first impression. It didn't have anything to do with the fact that she's trans, uh, but it had to do with that they were drunk and apparently said some things that did not go over very well. So, yeah. I don't know if that would count, hmm. though. I mean, she considers herself a she. I, I, I would imagine that it does to some extent, but... Uh... The very existence of uh, somebody in the liberty movement is female isn't really what we're talking about here, here, and Ian. We're talking. I'm just saying, you know, that's someone we could bring in. Usually, the female co-hosts work best when they live in Keene, because it's difficult to drive all the way across uh, New Hampshire to come here for a night. Certainly true, but there's yeah. plenty of women who live in Keene. Why do we offer it to my wife? I mean, you know, it just... It, she's not into the show. She doesn't even listen to Free Talk Live. Yeah, she's, We're not going to offer a... a she's a, a Free position. State Project mover. We're not going to offer a position on the show to someone who doesn't listen or has no interest in Free Talk Live. They have to show an, an interest in being here for them to you be You didn't considered. even mention that about We'll see you tomorrow people. night, freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com.
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,166, down $1. Silver opened at $15.76, up $0.03, cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $291.82. Today's metal prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. In the news... On Monday, the Supreme Court decided not to take up appeals involving torture at Guantanamo Bay. The High Court left intact rulings which previously stated the U.S. government could not be sued by a Syrian man who alleges torture at the military site. Another ruling also allowed images which show evidence of a Saudi man's torture to remain blocked from public viewing. The two cases allege physical and psychological torture at the hands of the U.S. government. A historic bill will be introduced today as part of a bipartisan effort to end the federal ban on medical cannabis. The bill is being introduced by Senators Rand Paul, Cory Booker, and Kirsten Gillibrand. Along with ending the federal ban, the bill would also downgrade the status of the plant from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2, officially allowing doctors to recommend its use. The Compassionate Access, Research Expansion, and Respect States Act is aimed at making overdue reforms to ensure patients access the care they need. The bill will be announced at a press conference this afternoon. Beginning in August, incoming students at Ohio State University's Columbus campus will be required to show proof of vaccinations for measles and several other diseases. The university said it will require new students at the Columbus campus to show proof of vaccination against diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, measles, mumps, rubella, hepatitis B, and chickenpox. Students who plan to live on campus will be required to provide proof of a meningitis vaccination. The university will continue to allow new students to seek exemptions based on religious, medical, or philosophical grounds. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Looking to promote your business or cause to tens of thousands of loyal listeners? Well, for a limited time only, the Liberty Beat is offering you the chance to save big while spreading your message. It's simple. Just sign up for three months of advertising and get your fourth month free.